Hi everybody and welcome to this special Hobby Titans. I'm flying solo today as we make do with a limited setup here. I'm not quite, quite excuse me, flying solo though. I do have an off-air friend, Bridger. I'm your autopilot system. He's you can my call me Jarvis. He's my autopilot system. So we do have Bridger here today uh, pushing buttons for us, but we are down to just two camera angles, so we thought we would give Brett the night off. He's actually on the other side of the studio playing a game with John right now, so he's making the most of it. Uh, we are going to be doing what we were going to be doing last week, right before we had a computer meltdown, which is making some Tau terrain. We've got both some of the tide wall stuff. I'm going to be showing you guys a cool uh, chipping in wear effect. And we also have some 3D printed Tau scatter made by Brett, the man himself. Uh, and so we're going to be doing all of this to look very worn, kind of beat up. Not a look we normally do for the towel, but what we're going to do for this terrain. Uh, with that said, Bridger, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, he's ready. All right, guys, let's get creative. Okay, so what you're uh, seeing here right now is Brett's video. Uh, well, Brett made this video for us to kind of show him making this scatter that we're going to be painting. So we will be doing the tide wall, but also this is uh, the scatter that is made totally from scratch. You can kind of see his process here. Uh, I don't know, it's pretty cool to see a 3D printed scatter piece come to life. Box, more interesting box, more even more interesting box, panels. Uh, very nice towel aesthetic here. Um, and so these are some of the things we're going to be painting. And then we'll also be painting, like I said, the tide wall, which is right here. Here's the finished one. A um, couple of cool things we're going to do. First, uh, as you can see, we have this interesting kind of green color. This is for a board that we sort of already have. And that board is the autumn mat that you guys have seen us use a few times. And we've talked before about this idea of having a mat that can have multiple train sets um, added to it, and that's what this is. So that autumn mat will support a whole towel board now, which we're really excited about. So here is uh, the, the tide wall, and then here's where we're starting, actually. I'll kind of talk about what I did already. Um, first, I'll have to paint this. It's the first thing I'm gonna do. This, as you can see, is uh, done in this very intense bronze color. This is uh, Castellac Bronze Citadel Air. And um, then what I've done and what we're gonna be doing is using, but, but, but where'd it go? Hmm. Oh man, well, oh, here it is. AK Warren Effects. We've played around with this a little bit before on the stream, although it's been a little while. Um, what we've done, so you guys are aware and can, can, can jump in with where I'm at, I have coated the, uh, much of the items in Castellax Bronze. So that is the tide wall and also these crates, uh, the big ones that Brett has made and the little ones that Brett made here on my pink foam uh, stick. They have been coated Castellax Bronze and then they've been given two layers of uh, the AK Warren effects, which is this stuff right here. Um, and what that does is make it so that the next layer of paint I add on top, we can take uh, brushes, we can take uh, cotton swabs, uh, and just kind of scrape the paint off to get the look that we got right here. Um, so that's where we're at right now. And with that said, we're gonna jump in and get to work um, painting things. So Zach, I guess I have a quick question uh, yes. here for you. Um, so this, these are like metal tide walls, yeah? These are That's like correct. the expensive tide walls? Because I always picture tide walls being plastic. Like like the Tau actually make them plastic? I picture most Tau stuff being plastic. You know, it's kind of funny. I, like Bridger, also sort of imagine that Tau stuff was like not a coat of paint over top of metal. Right. Is that, it's that's just kind that of what, color. It's like, instead it's like an intense, like weird uh, fiberglass thing. Is kind of what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I also imagine that too, but I've seen uh, like how GW has weathered them um, and this is how they do it. So I don't know, I guess, I guess we're wrong. How's our audio doing? So I'm working on fixing a, uh, the audio delay, which I did recorded tests, mm -hmm. but um, 
I guess over the interwebs, over streaming, it's a little different. Okay. Again, we lost we lost everything. It's all gone. I mean, we didn't lose everything. It's all coming back in a, a week or so. But um, yeah, well, that's a fun story. We'll talk about that. that was and a fun and story. non Bay Area people can learn about something called Ski Week, which we're really excited about to, to yeah. tell you guys. Yeah. Love about. love Ski Week. Um, okay, so I'm going to start by painting the floor of the sh of the shield wall um, port. And it's really simple. I, I go pretty fast on this. It's black. I have lead belcher. I pretty much cover it up like this, nice and easy. Oh, by the way, as you can see, I keep it separate. That makes you know the airbrushing nice and easy so that I can then sit this on top when I'm done. Highly recommend that, by the way. Highly recommend that. Um, so lead belcher, super, super fast. Next, what I'm going to do is put in a... Um, put on just like a little bit of a rune fang steel. I love this combo, as you guys know, of lead belcher plus a rune fang steel. Um, lead belcher is my base, rune fang is my highlight, um, and it works, especially for terrain. So a little bit of rune fang, we're gonna shake this up nice and good. Uh, and Bridger, I think we have like, I know we owe Super Reedy a couple, a couple, we uh, do a couple Super Chats. Oh, Super Reedy. So let me pull those up. Yeah. Thank you, Super Reedy, and thank you for uh, being patient with one of your Super Chats being delayed a week. All right, here we go. Thanks, Super Reedy. Hey, peeps. First, a quick thanks for always featuring my stuff, name or no name. Still gives me the warm fuzzies. And a quick reminder, only two days to go on the Discord painting competition. Well, funny story. Funny story. We, yeah, we, we are uh, uh, going to feature that a little bit today on the, on the show. So uh, I, we've made up a... a uh, um, a little thing that kind of shows off the winners. Wow, the stuff, um, the stuff that was entered was largely amazing, and the stuff that won was truly amazing, truly very amazing. Um, I'm in awe, so really excited to show that off a little bit later, a little bit later in the show. Um, okay, I'm going to... I'm just going to turn this light up a little, little bit. Oh, it's, it's a little too, still a little too dark. Okay, just going to uh, hit a little bit of Rune Fang Steel on, the, uh, on this guy now. And what I like to do, for whatever reason, on my Tau, tau Shield wall, I like to kind of make like a C, like around here, uh, to give it a little bit of, just a little bit like of light. Like directional lighting? Yeah, just kind of like that. And that's it. The last thing we're gonna, we're gonna do, we're gonna wait. Um, as you can see, the finished one here does have some messiness, and that's Seraphim Sepia spray wash through an airbrush. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do that as well. It's um, the dirt and grime from our boots. Yep. By our boots, I mean not our boots. Tau boots? Someone's boots. Maybe not just Tau boots. Maybe got stormed by guardsmen. Yeah. They have uh, dirty boots. Well-known yeah. fact. Um, Bridger, how have you been enjoying the new Tau? Uh, enjoying, right. Um, <laughs> I you, you had some experiences. I've, right? I've encountered a lot of other people who've really been enjoying the new Tau. And um, I don't know, I because maybe I mean our audiences don't necessarily entirely overlap. Or entirely overlap. Maybe some people don't know. I started as a Tau player because when I started Warhammer, I was like, I don't know. Range is always good in these games, right? I just I just want to shoot people, and if I can outrange you, then I'll win. Right. And I thought that's what Warhammer was. And over enough playing of the game, I discovered that the way Tau plays, I actually hate. I despise deeply. Yeah. And so now, just, shoot, this, just uh, only shooting. Only shooting and just not letting your opponent do anything. Mm. And so now I'm at the point in my life where I'm not super excited about the tower release, actually. Life. Yeah. I like that you've reached that point in your life. Yeah. We're what do we call do... it? Warhammer Middle Age. <laughs> we're gonna um, we're gonna do our first coat of paint on the uh, tide wall. So again, it has had Castlax bronze. Then it's had two coats of the AK Warren and chipping effects added to it. And now what we're gonna do is just add, I, I'm doing these kind of, this kind of like dark green color scheme to go with the for, uh, autumn -y colors on the autumn board. Uh, so this is Lupercal green. Uh, and nothing special here, really. We're literally just kind of covering this thing. I do like the way the Castlax bronze peeks through, but um, it's not exactly what I want. I pretty much wanna get full coverage because we're going to be tearing some of it back off. That's yeah, a cool uh, cool idea, cool way to do it, to do weathering. Yeah, um, it's easy as well. 
you you get you don't really paint. Instead, you well you just cover things in paint, and then you take paint off, which is you know very destructive. And that's what literally what we're doing is just making something that's been damaged and destroyed a bit. So there we go. This thing has been uh, this thing has been covered pretty pretty nicely. Um, if I don't hit every area, remember it's been a while since we've been we've done terrain on the stream. Actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we've been doing a lot of models, and um, it's nice to do terrain and kind of just be like, okay, guys, as you know, anything goes with terrain. Um, we haven't gotten to say that in a little while, <laughs> so now that sits for a second. Um, honestly, you can do anything normally. You can just treat it normally at this point. Um, and I'm actually going to also apply a highlight layer of uh, Sons of Horus Green, um, kind of around the inner ring. That's how I like to highlight my airbrush, highlight my my uh, towel shield line stuff. Wow, it's been a while since these kits have come out. I have a funny story about when this kit actually first came out. Um, this is before I, I think before I knew you, Bridger. Very likely. Yeah, it would have been maybe 2015 or 16. Yep, that um, was a long time ago. Yeah, so forever ago, I, uh, I, I was teaching at this point um, on Saturdays, mm -hmm. which is the day, as, as everybody, as, as GW peeps know, uh, when their releases are, right? Mm -hmm. And I was, I was teaching and, um, at, the, at, a, at music at, at a um, school up in San Francisco. And what happened was the release date Mm -hmm. uh, time was 10 a.m. Pacific time. That's early. Uh, for this Tau, it was called the Rampart thing. It was like the big one. <laughs> the Rampart Tidewall. Yeah. Rampart, yeah, when it, when they like boxed it initially, they had a bunch of stuff all together. Um, and it came out, everyone was like really excited about it. And um, the Pacific time was 10 a.m. <laughs> and that's when my class started. And oh. so I sat up at a piano because I was doing like, it was like a theory and ear training class. So I, I mostly sat at the piano for the whole class. So I'm sitting up at the piano. Uh, but I had my phone up here, and right <laughs> 10 a.m. I was like, "All right, guys, uh, we're gonna get started in one second. I just and I sat there and, and bought from GW. <laughs> uh, and then what was very funny is I like ran through my first exercise, and it was like it was like 10:03, mm -hmm. and I hit refresh, and it was already sold out. Ooh. I was like, "Oh my god, good thing I um, good thing I was kind of a bad employee." Classic GW. Classic, classic GW. Um, <clears throat> okay, so with the. Uh, with the first coat down, actually, Bridger, if you zoom in on this for a second, yeah, let's zoom in. Um, you can see it actually looks a little funky. I don't know if you guys notice; it's like doesn't look quite right. That is because of the layers of uh, AK chipping effects that are kind of on there. Um, so right away, the if you do put enough layers of the chipping effect, you'll basically right away get like this um, kind of sloppy, messy, damaged look. Which is what what I've done here. Zach, did you did you take like a hobby knife to the? It's got like some scratches. On oh it yeah, I did. I wanted to have like a like the look of I, in my mind, this place was attacked by tyrannids. Mm -hmm. So I did. Good good catch. Are we gonna do some weathering perhaps around the scratches? Yeah, I will probably uh, do a little bit do a little bit of paint, a um, little bit of paint there. Um, okay, so here we've got the uh, Sons of Horus Green. And I'm just gonna go around the, the inner layer here. Show you guys this. Yeah, it's funny that the tide wall sold out day one because that must have been seventh edition. Was it good in seventh? Um You know what? I think it was. When it when it first came out, I remember it being pretty at least being like pretty cool. Um because it it moved. It was like a fortification that right, moved. Right, right. Um, and that was, I don't know. At least fun, interesting. Yeah. Um, that, that was, it was different. And yeah, I, I don't know if you remember, but maybe not, but like it was really common to put like five Pathfinders in one of these and just have it kind of like glide around a little bit. Right, and right. Marker light, they had like, um, they had a cover save and the, <clears throat> um, the one thing I remember People who've been in the hobby long enough and, and have played against it will know that the um, the wall itself, with like the acrylic blue mm -hmm. wall thing, um, that had a rule where basically like when you shot um, when you shot at it, I, I forget. I think sixes actually. It would like bounce back. They bounced back. Yeah. 
And um, in the meta at the time, a lot of people were taking like these land raiders that had like all these hurricane bolters on them. Right. And like land raiders at the time do. effectively had four wounds. <laughs> so <laughs> what would happen is you would like, like you couldn't shoot because if you shot something that had like a ton of shots, like a vehicle, mm -hmm. you would like, like a dread, people were like running dreads with lots of shots. Uh, you know, you would get like all these wounds. They were basically the early predecessor of mortal wounds. Right. They would just like come right back at you. That Kinda seems fair. Yeah. Uh, one of those, you know, classic overlooked things by GW. Okay, so now comes the fun part, um, which is the part where we uh, kind of destroy and reveal some of the copper underneath. I like to start with a brush, and it's actually a little bit nicer if you use uh, water and you wet the brush here. So um, you're going to see it's going to just start like peeling stuff off very easily. So you've let the paint dry a little bit. Yeah. And then what we're going to do... You're going to go at it with a wet brush. Whoa. Let's just kind of start going in. Look at that. And you can see. So the brush is pretty is, is the most subtle effect. We can also go in with... Um, we could also go in with, say, uh, something sharper. But I, I, I'm not... I, I feel like the brush kind of gives the most natural, like, uh, just, like, chunks of the paint gone. That's that, very cool. That, that I'm into, yeah. It's super fun um, and very easy, and you get just really amazing effects. Um, I have a paper towel here. Because as you can see, it does, sort of, it does sort of screw up the paint. So there we go. So I'll show you guys a couple uh, ways that I kind of did uh, the previous one. The first is what I'm doing here, which is just kind of weather this, the, the kind of open rounded up area um, with the water effect and just kind of peeling the paint off a little bit. Um, and just let it do its thing, honestly. Like that's, that's what the product is for. That's very cool. It's super cool, right? I've never actually really done weathering myself. I've seen you guys do different kinds of weathering, but this is the first time I've seen this subtractive method of weathering. It's fun. It's interesting. Yeah. It does look fun. It looks like the kind of thing where if you had like a five-year-old, you could sit down your five-year-old and they would have a blast doing this. Yeah, you give them a wet, a wet brush and you're like, hey, do your thing. Right. Yeah. Okay, we can kind of like pick a panel and like totally erase all the paint on one panel. That's a look I like. I'll show you guys what I did here. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it's fun, right? Uh, okay, moving on. Just wiping off some stuff. Do, do, do. So, Zach, uh, yes. a quick quick question from chat. Are we going to talk about the fire prism? Do you, um, do I, you want to do I, didn't, I didn't see anything about it, honestly. I've been here. I've been like, these things come out, and like usually uh, Adrian and I are just like working all day. Yeah. No, tell me about it. <laughs> I, uh, I struggled. That's kind of why I invented the community corner for our show is it gives me a chance to, to actually see what's happening to sit down and like not get it wrong and i'm reading it at the same time as the audience and then we're kind of like we're sharing that moment for anybody who hasn't seen it before yeah and it gives me like a, a scheduled time for me to actively like look at the, the community articles right uh no I, I i didn't did you see it i mean i can pull it up it's sort of a question of like what do you do? You want to talk about that? Sure. What I, I'm curious what 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 got talked about. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> okay, so while Bridger pulls that up, still going off here, I can show you guys a couple other things you can use, and I'll show you some other ways that I, I that I want to get the the metal look. One is that I do like to go, as you can see on this guy that I already did. I do like to go around the edges and like tear some off Ooh. there. Um, so I'm going to do that step next. Yeah, yeah, Fugs working on eBay. That's uh, this is actually pretty rare of me. That was a pretty rare move. Yeah, you paid a lot for those those uh, those banshees. banshees. Yeah, not not a good deal. Because then you also paid shipping, right? I mean, that that the total was was the, that embarrassing amount that I that I mentioned. Okay. So, I don't know. It's honestly not awful. It's like it's like above normal, but that's that's it's not totally it's not totally terrible well i have the fire prism here okay and first of all their marketing team really 
pushing the line sometimes with these article names. Cook up your space marines with the flick of a switch using the new and improved fire prism. Oh, you don't I, like that? I, you know, something about that makes me a little uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah. You don't like cooking space marines? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I know melt guns are microwaves. Mm-hmm. So, it just makes me uncomfortable, the concept of... Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. Anyway, uh, here's the... It, so, there's only two profiles now, it looks like. Okay. There's a dispersed profile, which is 3d3 shots, strength 6, AP2, 2 damage. Okay. So, it's like crowd control. Ooh. What are you doing there? That looks cool. Oh, so, so as you guys saw while I was doing this, some of the paint was kind of like uh, glopping up and... Um, falling into the recesses. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing here now is just getting uh, clean, cleaning that off, and it's also going to probably chip a few more areas. Mm -hmm. Where the stream it. of the water is, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's really good. So and then while it's still wet, um, we like I said, you can also use like a con swab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, make sure I would get it like if you guys have ever had to get like a con swab tight, which means like rotating it to get the fibers in um, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go around the along the edges like this you can see it's a nice easy way to just like clear off the like get paint off the edges yeah that looks great so there's this low profile shot okay that's blasts 3d3 shots it's like a it's a good mid-range strength AP and damage. And then the focus shot is just two shots, strength 14, AP 5, 3D3 damage. Oh, that's fun. That is a fun uh, profile. I like... I like it. It's funny because people pretty much just used the middle profile before. Right. Which is now... This is the one they got rid of, kind gone. of? Gone. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they took the bottom profile up to two damage, which I think is a good, um, a good way to... Kind of cover your bases. Yeah. I'm sure Space Marine players are very upset. I mean, they're not in a good place to begin with right now. <laughs> then GW is like, hey, want to get, get, get cooked? Want to be part of uh, the culinary experience, Space Marines? <laughs> they, um, <laughs> they also revealed the Link Fire strat. So it's two CP. Uh, bu bu bu. You need at least two Fire Prisms to do it, sure. And they all have to be within 12 of each other, invisible. Interesting. You get two extra attacks for each other fire prism you shoot. Okay, so you're shooting the the big shots, and you just get their shots in your shot instead of rolling them separately, and then you ignore impulse. So it's no longer reroll uh, hits and wounds, which is what it used to be. It now ignores invulns, and you just activate them all at once. That's huh. good. I guess that's good. But it's always big shots. So you'll real you'll really really kill. Something. That's interesting. I, I like it. I think it'll depend on the price of fire prism. But yes, um, I think it's interesting. Of course, yeah. Well, it's fun. I, you know what? Like, we are very excited about this release at the studio. Mm -hmm. um, me, John, and Adrian all play this. These armies, this army, um, <clears throat> and the, these armies. In the case of. Harlequins and Unaris for those for Unari for those guys. I don't play either of them, but um, and we've you know we have some content around it here and on Hobby Tines as well. We'll, we'll actually have more um, re those extremely expensive banshees I just ordered. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, we're excited about all of this stuff. Honestly, um, I'm very excited about it. I'm more excited about Eldar than I was about Tau. I see. And I mean, you don't really play either of these armies. I don't, but I like playing against Eldar. I think okay. it's a fun, dynamic army. It does yeah. lots of interesting things. Fights, it shoots, it psychics, you know, it does... It, do it does everything, yeah. It does all the things. <clears throat> we do have another uh, message from Super Reedy here. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks, Super Reedy. Kudos, and thank you to... Or thanks to your hardworking titans for still managing to bring us the stream despite the technical difficulties. Hope the issues are sorted soon. Yeah, so we can talk about that a little bit. Um, basically, well, actually, we have the man here that can explain what it's happened. Me. Bridger, do you want to explain what happened? Yeah, so uh, our stream PCs are water-cooled, uh, and I built them myself, built all of our, all of our PCs, uh, and 
when I was building the stream PC for this studio, it, uh, when I installed the water cooler, there was a, a bit of bubbling, and I was not the most experienced at building water-cooled PCs. So now I know that's a very bad sign. Stop what you're doing immediately. But at the time, I was like, yeah, it'll probably be fine. And it was for a long time. I'm actually impressed that it survived for nine months with a leak in the water line. Yeah. That's, that's actually pretty impressive. But uh, here we are, nine months later. Leak in the water line uh, really just it, it added up, and the PC said, no, it's too hot. I quit. Not enough. Not, not enough cooling. So we I, took it, we took it into the, the, the doctor, the computer doctor. I, I don't think I even knew that PCs anywhere were water-cooled. It's, funny enough, kind of an old technology. Um, right. It, right. Yes, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, uh, normally these days you just put a really, a really, like a really big heat sink on and you call it good. And you okay. run a ton of fans. But uh, no, I thought, you know, water cooling's cool. Get some RGB lights on there, you know. Mm -hmm. Like a gamer, like you do. Okay. And uh, I'd never done it before. A lot of what, what I do for this channel is like, oh, I've never done that before. Let's... Yeah, let's do that. It's like right. new experiences. It's fun. New um, water-cooled PC. Super into it. Yeah, but uh, here we are. Um, had a little bit of a leak. So, so what happened was um, Brett and I were just kind of setting up for the show. It was honestly uh, maybe quarter after 4, maybe like 4.15, something like that. 4.15, mm -hmm. 4.30. We were doing some stuff, and... Um, I noticed that the computer was kind of running slow, and I was like, well, we're just going to need to restart before we go live. Not, not a big deal. That happens, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then Brett was actually prepping that video that we showed you guys at the start of the stream, mm -hmm. and he was like, wow, this is like really not, not working. Um, by the way, real quick, I'll just show you guys oh, as, yeah? I, as I move on to the next step. Um, while I'm letting the glue on the previous, uh, on the tide wall uh, kind of dry, um, I'm going to go ahead and start the barrels. The barrels I did with um, Iron Hand Steel, which we've talked about on stream before, is like basically exactly the same as Lead Belcher. Mm -hmm. um, and then, once again, the AK chipping effect. And these are going to be like a, like a red color, so um, I'm putting on a Galvor Bach red now on them. Again, just j actually, honestly, just like completely covering them. Uh, the chipping effect is also on them, so... And with these, actually, sort of am okay. Some of the silver is like almost visible with, even before the chipping. Um, I'm not sure why I'm okay with it, but I kind of like the look. Uh, so yeah, basically before the stream, um, Brett then kind of confirmed what I was noticing, which was like, hey, the computer is running very slow. And what we then did was uh, realize that everything was running. We, we did a, oh, we did a restart, that's right. Mm -hmm, so we mm -hmm. did a restart, this is pretty funny, honestly. We did a restart, and during oh. that restart, when the computer came back on, it was like, hey, your computer is, like, too hot. Right, you got, a, like, a BIOS warning or something? Yeah, and Brett was like, whoa, what is this? Um, and then that's when we called, that's when we called Bridger. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty bad timing, uh, especially considering we had all, we had, a lot of us have been using the computer, mm -hmm. um, like, quite a bit, honestly, it, it, leading up to leading up to this, which I'm now realizing probably just accelerated its downfall. Right, yep. Um, and so uh, that, that happened. We, Bridger found a shop that would take it. Surprisingly rare these days. I remember computer shops in my childhood, in my wee years. They were everywhere, computer repair shops, because nobody knew how to computer. So you needed to go to an expert to do anything. And then I think a combination of Geek Squad and Planned obsolescence really kind of removed most repair shops. Right, in inexpensiveness, right? Like, um, this is a big thing with shoes. People used to get their shoes repaired. Right, you used to go to a cobbler. But um, that cobbled. doesn't really exist anymore because now you just buy a new pair of shoes. Right. Like, so, why, what, why repair when replacing is just as cheap? Exactly. Um, up, 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 uh, looking for something. All right, well, you know what? I hate to do this, but we'll just thin with a little bit of water. There's like not, there's like barely any Galvor Bach red left in this. So I need to get it out. Um, so at this point, we took the computer to the shop, mm -hmm. and then they called Bridger. They did. They called me very confused. Why, why were they confused? Well, because they called you, and you said to call me, which confused them. And they called me, and I didn't pick up, because I didn't know who this number was. Right, right, right. And then 
I texted them. No, they texted me actually. And oh yeah, like, I told them to text you. They were like, hey, who are you? Hey, who are you? And I was, at this point, Zach had reached out to me, so I knew to Oh yeah, right after text. they called me, I was like, nope, don't talk to me, talk to this guy. <laughs> And then I immediately like messaged him and was like, hey, you're about to get a weird call. You need to answer it. Because Bridger, I, I, I had a hunch was like me where like if he sees a weird call from a weird area code, he's like, yeah, I'm not answering that. Right. Yeah. But I mean, in the end, it, it kind of worked out because they had a replacement uh, water cooler that will work. But, it, but here's, here's the big one. Wasn't I, ideal the timing? Because, well, actually, we don't know this, but um, right now... For a lot of schools in the Bay Area, there's like this kind of like winter break holiday that happens, which I've never experienced anywhere else I've lived. Um, there's like spring break, like often in March mm -hmm. or sometimes like even April mm -hmm. at different schools. But what happens in the Bay Area is there's this week in like late February that they call ski week or winter break. But it, the idea, since we're near Tahoe and skiing is kind of big, yep. is it's like one of the last weeks where you can get in good skiing. Apparently, I don't ski, but this is what I'm told. Uh, so I guess they were like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're leaving for a week. But, yeah, we can fix that one and day. And it was such a strange conversation because, like, they called me at 9 p.m. several days after we dropped off the computer, and they had confirmed that they could repair it. Mm -hmm. And they called me at 9 p.m., and they were like, yeah, so here's what it's going to cost. Uh, we have the part. You can either come pick up the computer right now or we'll repair it and give it back to you in, like, Almost two weeks. And I was like, that, why are those the two options? That, that's a very... <laughs> this is a simple repair. Yep. I just didn't want to mess it up again. I'm going to you, so now you're liable. That's kind of the purpose of this. <laughs> why is this going to take two I'm weeks? I'm going to it's you, like, so now you're liable. <laughs> like, this is unscrewing four screws, putting new part in, and screwing in four screws. Yeah. But you inspected the part, so you're liable now. So, not not the best circumstances, but um, you know, Bridger has has been working on a uh, top secret project, and part of that top secret project is a uh, kind of a, a different way to, I guess, potentially remote stream. Do I have that right, Bridger? Mm -hmm. or, or like stream, not necessarily in the studio. Yeah, this is our our mobile streaming rig. Yeah, hope it looks good. Yeah, the 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 issue is that it only has two cam, it only supports two cameras. Yeah, currently. Uh, by the way, going to hit this with a little bit of Word Bearers Red now for the highlight. Um, and for this, um, I'm just really going to kind of go around the tops. Mm -hmm. I'm not too too worried about this. You can see some of the paint is even still a little wet. Remember, um, this is terrain, and we're intentionally weathering this. Uh, by the way, I did my. I haven't done this in a while. I did my um, <clears throat> my uh, my super cool. You see, I just dropped them on the side, and they all stayed. My super <laughs> cool uh, pink foam trick, which is I cut a piece of pink foam slather it with uh, PVA glue, and then especially put like, like wet it a little bit, and then put a little bit of PVA glue um, on each kind of spot where I have, where I'm gonna put one of these, just a little extra, mm -hmm. and then stick them there, and they stay. It makes it super easy to work with. Mmm, very cool. Yeah, super cheap, awesome hack. Uh, you, you can then reuse this pink foam. Like you can just keep using the same strips over and over again. Just keep putting uh, glue on it, huh? Yep. Now, when it pops off, do you end up with glue attached to the plastic? No. It stays on the foam? Yes. It's amazing. It's a cool trick. Yeah. So, we just give it a little bit of, just giving it a little bit of shading, not a lot. Uh, now, we will, I am actually, I, I almost never edge highlight terrain, but we will edge highlight terrain here a little bit today um, on these towel pieces. Um, I don't know, just because I think it's going to look cool, just like around the tops here. I think they look very cool already. Yeah, and then we've got to do the weather peeling here. Streaming at Taco Bell. Yep, that's that was it. We actually got a, we finally got the Taco Bell sponsorship, and they said, you have to stream eating tacos at the establishment. And we said, you got it. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Here we are with a mobile streaming rig ready to go to Taco Bell. Yeah. Immediately after this. Um, but we're, we have some exciting plans for the mobile streaming rig, I think. Yeah, we, we, do, we do have some plans. Um, I know I'm, I'm looking to possibly use it a lot towards the end of 
calendar year 2022. Um, uh, and I know Bridger has plans with it. So yeah, kind of, kind of fun. Um, now Bridger won't always only be able to support two cameras. It's not, yeah, a, big, it's yes. not a problem if it can. But. It will always only support two cameras. The capture cards we're using mm -hmm. are external capture cards. They need USB 3. Okay. <clears throat> and um, I did not specifically look for a laptop that had more than two USB 3 ports. But um, I see. I really chose this laptop for the graphics card and CPU. Now um, I'll show another trick, guys. You you heard me mention that this this works a little nicer if it is wet. Um, so if like I, I have this these here now and they're ready to be chipped, have the chipping effect applied to them. <coughs> um, if you are airbrushing, uh, by the way, you can do all the chipping effect without airbrushing. But they even the chipping effect. Uh, themselves do recommend that you run it through an airbrush, but you don't have to. Um, I've actually done it without it. Uh, you can just use a brush and kind of slather it on. So if you do want to kind of get them wet to work with them and be able to scrape them a little bit better, just uh, give them a little blasting with water through an airbrush. Oh. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. So this is, at this point, this is just water. I'm just dampening all of the barrels a little bit here now um, with plain old water so that we can do uh, some of the chipping effect on them. And this is fun. We're going to do some more than others. There's that. OK, and we will do a brush. Use a new brush. Don't use the brush that has the green all over it, because because um, it's green. Because it's green. OK, and then here we go. I still actually am finding I want the brush itself to be wet. Makes sense to me. Yeah. So a little bit of mobile rig lore, if you saw us at LVO, we did have the nuclear football, if you will. We had the stream backpack at LVO. Oh, we did? You just, you, you as a viewer may not have even, uh, definitely didn't know at all that we'd planned to try streaming from LVO and then found out that the hotel internet was terrible. Oh, the hotel internet wasn't good enough. It was quite, quite bad. <clears throat> Are you surprised by that? No, no. Especially now that I know how bad the Rio was. Oh yeah. What a what a I, I shockingly mediocre hotel. Yeah, I, I guess I would just say I didn't mind the Rio. Um, I know a lot of people did. I, I was kind of okay with it. I, I thought it was fine. I thought the mirror in the uh, or the window in the shower was odd. It was strange, yeah. It was strange. But we were in apparently we got lucky. We were in the good tower. We were in the masquerade uh, tower. Yeah. Um. About fifty percent of the people I talked to didn't have hot water. You know what? I my water was like, uh, it, it actually one thing I found sometimes. I, <clears throat> I don't know if other people have ever found this. Uh, at like some hotels, it's kind of random. Um, you gotta you gotta actually just let it run for way longer than you think you should. Mm -hmm. And as a Californian, we don't really do that anymore we don't. because we like always are like conserving water. Right. And you think Vegas would want that as well? You would um, think. But. Yeah, I, I let mine run like a while one time. Like I'm gonna say a good like two three minutes, and it finally did kind of get hot. Um, but I I, I I I can't say I'm surprised that you heard reports that there was no hot water. <clears throat> okay, look at this. Yeah, weird hotel. Oh, Melody also had the pervy window. So weird. Yeah, I, I don't know what um, <clears throat> you know. Brian, when Brian first saw that, Brian had this great comment that was like, he said, you know what, some architect. Architect just like dreamed that up and just like was so <laughs> that was just like their life. They, they were, were just, proud of that. They were, yeah, some architect really oh no, one came off. Oh the so, glue. Yep, yeah, so so I am actually going I am actually pressing pretty hard on these as you guys can see. I should honestly probably not be using a brush um, to get some of the effects I'm getting here. I should probably be using something a little uh, a little like sharper. Um, which also works. Uh, but this guy might just basically be being done being weathered now, which is okay. You know, they weren't all mega weathered. That's right. I don't actually want them all, all mega weathered. Um, now, also, by the way, the longer the water kind of sits on there, the, the better the weathering will, will come out for you. Um, so if you, like, just set water on some of them, just like, doo -doo -doo, cover them a little bit more with water. Because uh, let's not care ourselves. The airbrush technique is good, but also like airbrush water does like dries pretty quick. And I also have a fan pointing at me. You do. And away from me for ventilation. For ventilation, people are always asking. Oh my gosh! I actually saw somebody uh, comment on 
a video Adrian and I did back in like June about us not having mask. We need to put like a disclaimer somewhere about our setup. We should just show our setup and just like go through our setup and. Yeah, we're gonna have a video about that, but this is the internet. So people will. At least 80% of your viewers will not see that video. That's true. There's really no winning. Like, like when I, you kind of just learn that some things are, you just, you lose some battles. Like when I wore the Peter the Falcon shirt on, <laughs> uh, it was a member stream. This shirt has uh, a friend of ours, Peter, he's a Canadian. He lives way up north in the hinterland. Had his face on an American eagle, on an American flag. But all anybody could really see was that I was wearing a shirt with an American flag and an eagle on it. And they, well, didn't, they didn't get it. So I explained it. Well, Peter does, Peter is prevalent in the 40K world. He is. But he's not like a face in the 40K he's world. He's not a face in the 40K so, world. So this is like not necessarily, for people who don't know, this guy does basically stats, right? He, he compiles stats. He runs mm -hmm. a, what's his website? 40kstats.com. Okay, so he runs a website and he does like cool stats about like the meta and about competitive events. But like, do you ever really see his face? Not often. Right. So, but I, so carrying on the story, I explained like twice in that stream what the shirt was, but that was a sum total of maybe 90 seconds of explanation in a four hour video. So nobody got it, right? The vast majority of viewers just missed it. And I just chalk it up as a loss and I won't wear that shirt again. Yeah. Just I, take the L. I think it's okay. I think, I think, I think the shirt is better now. I think it's, <laughs> it's had more value now. Yeah. Only the most dedicated fans will really understand that shirt now. Yeah. Um, yeah, Super E actually is a good idea. We should just, uh, we should just, add, honestly, it's, it's, I know he's being silly because it's Super E, but we should honestly just like throughout each stream, we'd like once or twice in the stream, we should just put up a little thing that says like, just a text saying like we have a ventilate system. And honestly, when I like, um, if, if any of you guys saw on the community post, I've been painting a Fire Slayers army mm -hmm. uh, the past two days. Um, and I, I, I wear, um, I don't know, where, where is You have a respirator? Mask? I wear the mask the whole time I'm doing that. Like, if I'm, like, in here just painting off stream, I turn the ventilation on and do that. Um, you know, this stream is, is two and a half hours a week, I'm, and, and, you know, you can't really talk in a mic and have the mask on at the same time. So It's, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, Mythbusters, I think, had... Weird, weird thing to bring up, but they had... They had a setup for this? Similar problems where it's kind of hard to do certain things and tell a story. Yeah. And it's safety and it's a bummer and it's cool to see people, I guess, like be like, hey, uh, you, should, you should not be doing that thing that you're doing. Right. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, okay, I'm going to use, I'm going to actually move a little faster on this than I am. Okay. So I'm going to use kind of a heavier brush. Oh, yeah, there we go. A like heavy that. duty brush. Just bigger, honestly. Um, I think it's still about equally soft. Um, and these brushes are a little soft, which is uh, a, a, an effect. Like, when you guys use the chipping effect <coughs> stuff, first of all, I really recommend this stuff. Um, and we, we included a link. So if you're wondering where to get it, there's, there's a link uh, on, underneath this. Uh, and I, 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 I definitely recommend playing around with it. Um, but I would always start, as I often say, with terrain. Mm -hmm. And you guys will kind of see like what, what different things can do. Um, let me see. Oh, here's something I can do. Got a toothbrush nearby, as always. Oh, now that's I, really abrasive. That's with the toothbrush, tear I really, the paint right yeah, off. I want to be careful, again, about taking my, my guy off, the, off the, the glue stick thing here. They have, but there you go. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That'll just pull the paint right off. Yep. This is warp speed here. So you can get different looks, and um, I don't know. I love I love the chipping effect stuff. It really looks natural, I guess is the word. Um, so how does it how does it work? Like, what does it does it change the? I don't understand. How how do? I don't know. It just works. It just it just does it. it. Just does it. So Pat doesn't understand what the bathroom window is at LVO. Uh, Pat, picture, picture in your mind's eye, a hotel shower, right? It's 
just it's just a normal shower. Honestly, got a just, curtain. just any shower, right? Just like a shower. It's got a curtain. It's got yeah. a shower head. Except now, the side that you don't enter on, it's a wall, right? Every bathroom showers up against the wall. That's just how they're built. Right. This wall has a square hole in it at eye height. And it has glass in that hole. And that's the bathroom window. Yeah. Th there, was, there was a window from the shower itself into... <clears throat> um, the rest of the hotel room. So um, I was lucky enough to have a room to myself, but if you didn't have a room to yourself, you would be like in there showering and look out and your buddy that you're sharing a room with for LVO would be like on the bed sitting there just like reading Watching his codex or whatever. Right, and like you could look and make eye contact. Like I could make eye contact with Bridger while I'm showering. Yeah, it was, it was quite strange. You and Brett shared a room. Did your guys' room? Uh... It did have the shower window. Nice. However, Fortunately, Brett and I had very deeply desynced schedules where he would get in early, shower before bed, or maybe when he got up, I don't know, but I was asleep. Because he would go to bed early and wake up early, and I would get in quite late and wake up as late as possible. Yeah, I so see. So we were ships in the night, man. Okay, well, that's good. Showering uh, separately so you were asleep when not able to look at each other in the eye while showering. Right, yeah. Okay, I'm now going to do... Um, the barrel, the large crates mm -hmm. um, here, which I'm excited about. These also ones Brett designed. Um, these ones we're gonna paint kind of a dark gray color. No, these ones we're doing light gray, I think. The small, yeah, I'm doing kind of a lighter gray color on these. So I'm actually not using uh, Citadel for this. I'm gonna be using AK English gray here. Through English gray? Yeah. Uh, and this may need thinning, I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it goes through the, find through, out. the, through the Badger. Bridger, how are we doing on Super Chats? I do see... We here. do have a few Super Chats here. You want me to... Fun, yeah. Uh, thank you, Megan. Oh, Megan. What's up, Meg? Hi, Meg. By the end of the show, can we get a shot of Zach wearing the Titan's apron over the Titan's shirt? AF, AF. And that friend is memes. I don't know what AF, AF means. Should I know Asking what that means? Asking for a friend? Oh, yeah. Sure. I, uh, I, uh... That is what that means. It's not a bad idea. Okay. I wore that shirt, the the Titan meme shirt, uh -huh. in public once. Oh, what happened? Nothing. Turns out. Nobody cares. Nobody, yeah. Yeah, of course not. But, uh, you know, I did it. Yeah. Took well, some courage. What? Ah. Okay. I was so, kind of hoping you would commend me on... Uh, on wearing it in public? On, yeah, it, it took a lot for me to do that. Um, I mean, I, I wore it in public today. You did. I mean, I, yeah. gu I guess, no, I guess I put it on and came here. I didn't, like, stop at the store or anything. Right. Well, there's still time. You could stop at a store on the way home. I could. I won't. Um, but if I needed to, I would. I don't think... <laughs> I'm not that worried about it. Look, how many people do you see having shirts on? You have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> okay. That happens all the time. There was a pause there. How many people do you see having shirts on? <laughs> just in general, how many people have shirts on? <laughs> it's just weird. Like, it's... The merch that we have that's just, like, our logo and stuff, I'm cool with wearing that because nobody will ever know that that's... Like, wearing your own merch is a... I feel like it's a taboo thing. But they wouldn't know that it's my merch, so they wouldn't care. But when my face is on the shirt, that's weird. I'm wearing my own face. What about a picture of a, of, what about a shirt that has your driver's license on it? <laughs> <laughs> Would you feel comfortable wearing that? No. For, and your social security number. For more <laughs> reasons. You wouldn't, what, you wouldn't wear that shirt? No. Nope. Out in public? People are taking pictures of you? I wouldn't want that shirt to exist. <laughs> Oh, man, that's a bummer. Uh, well, we have another one here. Thank you, Broken Chef. Any experience with Sonic Cleaners? Hoping to get one to strip bad paint jobs. Um, First, what, yeah. what is a Sonic Cleaner? Uh, yeah, so a Sonic Cleaner is a <clears throat> um, little thing that, it's like a little tray and it vibrates super fast. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to, people use it to clean jewelry. Okay. So you put um, like some solutions in and you put your jewelry in and then it vibrates and it like, the, you know, the physical ass component of it jumps in there with the, um, 
with the solution. chemical, the yeah. solution, right? And 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 does this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, broken chef. So I've never used it, but um, I had a I had a uh, still do. I don't see him a ton. I have a, a friend um, Jody in Santa Cruz. Uh, who I've probably chatted a little bit about for awesome painter helped teach me how to airbrush mm -hmm. um, and Jody um, <clears throat> Jody you, you, uh, does it um, or at least used to I don't know if he still has been using it recently um, but I I've never felt like I needed to use it um, okay I'm actually using the Sotar for this real quick sorry one more airbrush cleaning here folks no, you're good um, so I I, I've not used it, but he, he swore by it. My I'll be honest with you, Broken Chef, to strip min minis, I, I've i never stripped minis in a way where I, like, I suddenly need it the next day. I'm usually able to be like, oh, um, <clears throat> I just know I, half the stuff I put, I have a bucket, it's actually down here, full of um, Simple Green. And, um, and You're one of those people. Yeah, and I just add um, my stuff to it. Because to be 100% honest with you guys, like typically if I need to strip something, um, I look at them like this needs to get stripped. So I just put it in there. I'm not like thinking about like, oh, I just got this off eBay and I want to start painting it tomorrow. But if that was your case, Broken Chef, then I, I would try it. I know you're doing a lot of commissions, which means there's a chance you're going on eBay and trying to find like, yeah, things that you want to. Uh, strip and then repaint, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, can we talk real quick? Broken Chef, to answer your question, I would say go for it. They're not that expensive. I do have, a, I, I trust my friend Jody's judgment on, on painting stuff, and, and he, he was super into it. So I would say give it a try. Um, but otherwise, my method for me has worked. But you just have to have like those buckets and just be like dumping stuff in them all the time, um, which is what I do. Um, and by the way, can we talk about on eBay? Yeah. How. People will, I'm trying to think how to say this. People will, uh, chat, chat's going to either think I'm having a hot take now or Where are you back, going with this, Zach? What are you, this. I'm a little worried. I'm a little nervous. People on eBay will horribly paint their miniatures and okay. then sell them to you. And like the, 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 they will ask more than the MSRP of like the, 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 the item from the Games Workshop, like at, 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 at cost. And they're, they're, uh, I, I've actually, when I was younger and a little more um, easily annoyed by people, I would literally message people and be like, hey, um, actually, honestly, I did this somewhat recently. I was like, hey, your price on this seems a little high. I'd be willing to pay this amount. Um, and oftentimes they come back at me with, well, I put it together and painted it, so I expect to be paid for that. Right. Yeah, Fuchs, pro paint it. But it's sort of like, no, actually what you did is you took a brand new product and you beat it up, and now I have to <laughs> fix it. <laughs> Um, so, well, it's, so, it's a perspective of value added. Some people think that just because they put time into it, there is value added. Subjective whereas, value added. I love it. Whereas other people understand that it is a product with depreciated value through use. Like if, if you try to sell a half-eaten sandwich on eBay, it should sell for less than the original sandwich. You well, know? okay, but hold on. Who made the sandwich? Like, so what if there's a bunch of sandwich ingredients Mm -hmm. And what they did is they took the sandwich ingredients and they assembled the sandwich. And then and took then they, several then they bites. took like a few bites. Oh, and by the way, they also didn't do a good job of assembling <laughs> the sandwich. <laughs> it's like they, they like didn't it's not good at all. Um so now they're like, hey, actually, I realize you can get a Reuben like from a like a good restaurant for <laughs> you know, I realize you can get a Reuben from like a like a, a sandwich spot for like 12, 14 bucks. But listen, I put this Ruben together for you, <laughs> and frankly, I, you know... I even tested it. I, I Look, tested there's it. three bites here. I expect a little bit more. I like, made sure this is a good sandwich. If you, if you just want a Ruben, go get it. You know, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure everybody's sort of had an experience like this. Um, I can't remember. Ah, I had a good one recently. And, oh, ah, yeah, it was a 3D printer, actually, I was trying to buy from a, from a dude more locally um and he was just like he was selling it for, it, it was like two years old and he was selling it for the exact price when it came out um and i and brett brett's point kind of at the time was well he probably thinks that people are really getting into 3d printing and because of covid it's like kind of hard to get one and there's waiting lists um but i was like hey like you, you said you've used this and it had a few 
part, parts that you had to replace. Right. And but like you're asking for the same amount, so could I could I pay this amount for it? And he was like, nope, I, like not not flexible in the pricing. I was like, okay, cool. Um, still still had still had them at least a couple months ago. I don't know. I, I, I Megan gets a Megan uh, gets the brunt of this, but I get so annoyed when people are like, in in our hobby are like, hey, I want this amount of money for this thing. That's not good. And I did something to it, and then you're like, okay, I'll pay you a little less, like, and then they're like, no, not flexible in this, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, there are, there are people who are willing to haggle, and there are people who are offended at the concept of haggling. Yeah, I mean, I'm not willing to haggle like at all. Like, literally, what I'm doing is I'm just like messaging them and saying, this is how much I'm gonna, if you want to pay me, if you want this amount of money, that you and I can make that happen right now, right? <laughs> 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 so you're willing to have one counter offer and no more? Yeah, they there, counter there's, an amount, right, there, there's an amount that should be paid, and like we all know that amount. And if if they if they don't know that amount, then it's it's not really about haggling. Ugh, I need. I was hoping I wouldn't have to thin. Um, I was hoping I wouldn't have to thin this AK paint, but I do. You do? You already sprayed a lot of it. I know. I, I'm like powering through with the Sotar on it. Um, and, and I and I really I really don't like it, but um, is that why I, you keep using the toothbrush to, to clean the needle? Yeah, that's why I keep using the toothbrush to clean getting, the needle. Like that's a little over highlighted. The flow is just not like exactly what I want. Ah oh, man, like this is I always forget. Like I've been I, I painted the fire slayers exclusively with a Citadel paint, Citadel Air, pretty sure. much. Mm -hmm. I kind of forget sometimes that the AK ones are. Awesome paint line, but a little inconsistent with the different colors. And I should have known because this is a this is a lighter color, um, and lighter colors are the ones that that'll do this. Um, so I probably will hit that guy right there with a little bit of the, the previous color. That highlight, as you guys can see, stands out quite a bit compared to the other ones. It is a bit. It's a bit drastic. So, <clears throat> got got to, got to fix that. Um, all right, well, we have another one here. Thank you, Michael Cody. I heard your explanation of the shirt and made multiple Super Chat jokes about it anyway. Next, I will ship some chewing tobacco to the studio for you. Chewing tobacco? I, we're not... Wait, I, I missed that. This, is, this was about the oh, Peter shirt. Oh, your so, shirt, your shirt. So, Michael, super fans who saw the explanation or several of my future explanations, they'll get it. And I appreciate that you guys get it and you make jokes about it, but I didn't realize until after the cameras have stopped rolling, the impression that the majority of viewers got of me because I wore that shirt. That's sort of what I lament, is that I, I sent out into the world a, a bad image, a poor representation of myself. I appreciate that you understand, but most people don't. Um. What if Michael Cody sends us chewing tobacco? What if, I'm I will not, you cannot pay me there's no amount of money same, in the world. Same. I will to not. To make me have chewing tobacco. Yeah, I don't. Well, would you rather? Okay, Bridger, would you rather uh, chew tobacco? Uh huh. Like, like, or would you rather or smoke, die? Smoke cigarettes. No, this is this is not. One you have of to those. pick one of them. No. Nobody in Titans Studio does either. By the way. No, this is except for can't. John. John smokes uh, a carton of Marlboro Reds a week, <laughs> and he tears the filters off of them. And sometimes he smokes two at a time. He's an <laughs> utter monster. Um, other than that, nobody smokes. Other than John smoking a carton of Marlboro. You weren't there. <laughs> Over the weekend at this birthday party, John walked into a room double fisting Cheeto bags. <laughs> he what? had a bag of Cheetos in each hand. Like, like a large bag or a small bag? No, like a small bag. And everybody's response was like, John, why do you have two bags of Cheetos? But they're small bags? I missed it. <laughs> yeah, they're small bags. So he had two personal bags of Cheetos. <laughs> Okay. It was so funny. One time John one time John came here and brought snacks and he brought two bags of like shareable size of potato chips, but they were both sour cream and onion. <laughs> which is like, okay, that's a great flavor, John. But at some point no, you I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> because <laughs> but it's not much better than me. I just brought a case of Coke Zero knowing that I was the only person that's who would pretty drink bad. It. That's pretty bad. That's also yeah, that's not not your finest hour either, but like <laughs> the double sour cream and onion was interesting because it was like it was you, a conscious decision. Yeah, yeah. Like if you bring two bags of chips, you like put them out. You're like, oh, Zach and Adrian and Megan was here. Like might have some chips, but what he was actually suggesting is like we're gonna need so many, <laughs> we're gonna need so many chips 
sour cream that I'm going to bring up a backup bag. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the other room. Hopefully he doesn't hear us to defend himself. <laughs> no, he can hear us. <laughs> Is he like, what? He's talking about the time I brought two bags of sour cream and onion potato chips. Oh. Um, so what are we doing? Well, I am uh, finishing up these guys, and now they are ready to be weathered um, with our weathering stuff. And then last but not least will be the small crate. So we're just kind of going through each thing one at a time. And as I said, the, what you guys did not see off camera, I don't think, I, yeah, I didn't do any of this on stream, is I, I use the, the worn, the chipping effects. Now, one of the reasons I don't do it on stream, by the way, folks, um, which I could have, you're probably wondering, oh, that would have been <clears throat> nice to see, right? Um, it, it's, it's like weirdly unpredictable for drying. Um, so like sometimes it, it just dries odd. Like if you kind of hit a little area with like a little bit more, that area could take like forever to dry. It, it's, it's a little odd. So I don't like to actually like have wet things that I'm waiting for dry, like to dry on stream. Especially I'm like flying solo today. So there's no like, there's no like breath to kind of. Yeah, you, you can't know, cut to what I'm doing. Cause what I'm cut. doing is sipping a two liter of Mountain Dew and eating a salad. He's yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's eating this, a salad with no salad dressing on it at all. Yep. Um, and I guess it's somewhat healthy. And then also at the same time, he's drinking, as he said, a uh, not diet, just straight two liter bottle of Mountain Dew. Yeah. Um, so I don't know where that, how is that? that is, it's been in the studio for, I want to say six months in the fridge. Yeah. Is that, is that more healthy or, or more unhealthy, folks? Let's do a poll. <laughs> is Bridger's dinner of a salad? Bridger, can you make a poll? And ask, is your dinner of a salad with no salad dressing combined with a two liter bottle of Mountain Dew, which I don't think you'll drink all of? I will not. Okay. Uh, but still, you, know, you guys know, like, it's, it's kind of the same as eating a bag of sour cream and onion potato <laughs> chips versus eating a personal size bag of Cheetos. One of them, like, you will eat more, right? You're going to eat more. You're going to drink more. More calories than I will eat? Certainly. No, I think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's for sure. No, but what I mean is I think you're going to dr drink more than you would drink if it was a personal, if it was like a, like a can, like a 12-ounce can. Um, right? It can go either way with me, honestly, because sometimes I'll have a can and then I'll have another can, which okay. is probably more than... Uh, that's probably worse. If I had just... Like, because there's no half measures with cans. You, you, you just have full cans, you know? Right, right. Ooh, polls coming in, not 100% no, but largely no. Not healthy. But yeah. not 100% no, so. What about, what about the idea of it being both healthy and unhealthy? Like, oftentimes, okay. I'll, often, like, I cook up for Megan and I, and oftentimes we'll have, like, really healthy food, but we'll have, like, Two or three margarita, I mean margaritas before. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's, I think there's, it's a, there's a little complexity going on there. Yeah. I mean, I think the amount, the quantity, is certainly a relevant question. The salad, quite large. Um, the two liter is a two liter. But I'm not going to drink the whole thing. Obviously, I've had quite literally two sips. It's Le a bit. It's a big salad. I. Um, I but I'm not gonna eat all this lettuce. <laughs> I had all the, the non-lettuce parts. I ate like the onions and tomato and all the good parts, the croutons. But uh, the amount of lettuce I'm willing to eat in one sitting, very low. Okay, so you can see same thing, same effect here. These guys, uh, Brett built some really like nice edges on these things. So you can see I'm actually like uh, trying to weather the like get get some of the make it look like the edges have been chipped a little bit more than the other parts. Uh, and like these edges as well. Up and down there. It's really nice actually. This is a good, this is I think is one of the best ones <coughs> uh, to take the weathering, the, the larger crate. Um, this stuff's super cool. Um, honestly, a lot of, where you can see like great examples of this stuff, if you guys ever check out any of the historical gamers, like a lot of like people doing World War II stuff, like Flames of War. We'll do this. Bridger, how are you doing okay over there? Yeah, I'm just chewing some lettuce. You know? Just chewing some lettuce? Are you chewing lettuce on mute or? It's calorie negative. I was on mute until you asked me a question. 
Uh, no, that's fine. Please. Buy oh, you want me to unmute it, Chew Lettuce? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Oh. Um, oh, little little little, little vid one. Uh, do, uh, how are we doing on super chats? Uh, we do have several more. Okay. Um, one might describe it as a deluge of super chats. Oh, that's chats. fun. Uh, thank you, Ty. Howdy, Titans. Hey, Glad Ty. to have you back on the air. Doing a demo game this weekend for a friend who's interested in the game. Five hundred points, guard versus space marines. Any advice? I think that could actually be a very thematic and fun game. Yeah, what, <clears throat> what advice, Bridger? I, I can certainly give advice, Ty. I have a number of friends who I, um, we, Br Bridger and, and I, and a, a lot of people in the area, we have a lot of friends, I think, uh, that are like board game people, but not necessarily right. war mm -hmm. game people. Yep. And I think a lot of us have people like that, especially like spouses sometimes, or friends of friends. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, uh, Bridger, what would you, what would you, advice would you give to somebody like, getting a new, getting it like, helping somebody learn a game? I mean, there are pros and cons to starting small. I think definitely keep it manageable. Like, if you start with a 2,000 point game, they're going to get completely lost unless it's, like, custodies. <laughs> okay. And you just give them custodian guard. Yeah. Um, but, uh, there, there are, it is a different game at smaller point levels. So it is worth making sure that they're aware this is just like, this is a tutorial game. Like, this is an intro. There's a lot of features you haven't unlocked yet until you keep playing. Um, but yeah, I think 500 points, start small, and start with relatively simple armies like Guard and Space Marines. I think those are both good armies to start with, and they, they play against each other decently well. So long as you're not just like shooting las guns at Space Marines, that's not, that doesn't feel good. But feel a little bit of plasma in there for the, for the Guard. Space Marines, honestly can stick to just like intercessors like the space marine players can be power tripping don't even worry about giving them any fun cool toys to play with because like does ty play guard or space marines do we know i don't know <clears throat> they didn't didn't say yeah i am um, playing playing games i think the biggest thing and and I'm, I'm sure ty you wouldn't do this but i think the biggest thing is for me, uh, it, I kind of do the Fight Club rule, which is that like I, I'm kind of aiming to lose a game, typically. Right. If I'm playing with a friend of mine who's like a board game friend, and I know that they like board games, and they like trying to win, I'll go into a 40K game kind of assuming that I'm going to lose. Right. And if I'm playing with somebody that has never done any war gaming or anything, again, I'm, I'm, like, I'm honestly planning on losing uh, my, my, first, my first game. Now, here's the other thing I'll, I'll say, and John and I did this when I was teaching him AOS a few months back. Mm -hmm. We went going. He was playing Gloom Spite, um, and I was playing, like, a very toned-down version of my Ogors, like, mostly Morn Fangs. Yep. Um, and we kind of got going, and one or two things happened, and, like, it was clear that by turn two, like, he wasn't, like, he was getting messed up, right? right. But John was like, hey, let's re-rack. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we reacted, and John had, and they, it ended up actually being a close game because John's a good war gamer, right? Um, so it was really interesting because he, he was kind of able to see, like, pretty quickly, like after a couple turns, like, oh, I definitely would have done this different had I understood that rule better, right? Right. Etc. So Ty, I would say, like, also, like, that's advice I've learned is like, be prepared to re-rack because if, you, especially if your friend can like figure stuff out, they, they've played other war games maybe or. Um, you know, they've played uh, like more tactical board games, stuff like that. They might they they might benefit from like from from a re-rack, right? Uh, so Ty is in chat, and they said he plays both, but the opponent wants to pilot the guard. I would say keep the Space Marine army very simple, like a captain, some intercessor squads. Keep it chill, okay. Uh, and then give the guard tools to deal with Space Marines. So like a Chimera with plasma in it. Give them. Maybe a Lehman Russ. Um, you know, uh, orders are going to be a lot to think about, but you do need HQs. Mm -hmm. And basically every guard HQ gives orders. Yeah. But, you know, help them through it. And um, make sure that they're not just getting guardsmen punched by Space Marines. There needs to be more to the game than, than that. Than, uh, guard man, than Space Marines murdering basic humans? Right, yeah. Yeah, because it's it's easy to power trip as the space marine player and be like, "Look at my superhumans crushing you, mere mortals." Yeah, but that's not the point of the game. Exactly, and um, 
Yeah, have fun. I, I think um, kind of kind of the nature of, of your of your friends like experience. You, like gauge, gauge that, like whether they've played other games before, or if they're a board game person, or, or whatever, you know, um, whatever, and adjust accordingly. Good luck, Ty. We do have quite a few more super chats. So I'm oh, gonna, okay. I'm gonna move on to the next one. Yeah. Thank you, Rainbow Unicorn, Solo Zach Stream, loving the shirt, bold choice, fun question. In your opinion, what is the best fast food restaurant, and why is it Taco Bell? Well, Bridger, what do you, you, you probably, do you actually think Taco Bell, Bridger? Best fast food restaurant? Best fast food restaurant. Let's talk, um, let's talk national chains in the, in the U.S. Oh, it has to be a national let's, chain. Well, let, let's, let's, let's start there. Is, does In-N-Out count as a national chain? Yeah, um, no, that, that's regional. That's in a lot of states, honestly. It's, it is in a lot of states. Is, is In-N-Out your pick if, 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 uh, if you can pick In-N-Out? No, that was just like one of those easy things to say where we draw on the line on what is a national okay, chain. Okay, I see. We'll, let, we'll, we'll do regional. We'll do regional oh, as well, but let's start national. That's tough. Sorry, guys. I'm going to turn my back here to a second. That's fun. To find my thinner. That's cool. Um, this, this is a really tough question. Uh, so McDonald's have nailed the concept of producing a consistent product despite having workers who don't really care about the success of the company and <laughs> each store being owned by a different person. Yep. So like they've they've really nailed the whole science of getting raw materials to result in the same thing most of the time. Okay, their consistency. Their product isn't the best, but it is very consistent. And their Coke is the best. And that's cuz they have a special deal with Coca-Cola. Okay, interesting. So McDonald's uh, consistency here is what you're valuing. And the best Coke. That's very important. Okay. Let's keep that in the back of our head. Okay. Um Arby's best in class for being the only national chain that makes that thing that they make. Okay, Bridger, you're you're going. These are all great points, but like, let's say, like, if you had to pick one national, it's really hard. Like, how do you compare? It, it how do you compare a Little Caesars <clears throat> to a Taco Bell? You can't. Well, I'll I'll I'll, I'll toss a contender in the ring. Nationally speaking, yeah. Nationally speaking, Caldorf has got it. Best fast food, nationally speaking, is Wendy's. Wendy's? Uh, yeah, Wendy's. You're just wrong. <laughs> They're not even best in class for, oh for burgers gosh. and fries. Wendy's is, you, you just know, like you can find a Wendy's anywhere. You can find a Wendy's on like a, on like a, a interstate, like like Interstate 80. Yeah, or, but or, you the, know it's going to be good. And you also know across the street is a McDonald's where you will definitely get a better meal. Oh, I well, I, I guess I disagree with that. I think Wendy's is definitively better tasting. Unless specifically you want a baked potato and a bowl of chili. Oh, I no, I, I'm like... Burger and fries, like Wendy's is gonna be better. Maybe a chicken sandwich, but McDonald's redid their chicken sandwiches and those are better than Wendy's now. All right. I don't think Wendy's wins. Anywhere McDonald's competes with Wendy's, McDonald's wins. Okay, well, their Coke I is better. Strongly disagree. Well, I don't drink Coke, I don't drink soda. I usually get unsweetened iced tea or water or maybe, yeah. So. Oh. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I just I guess we're just in a disagreement, Bridger. The like Wendy's is okay. Um, regionally know. speaking, yep. my two, my two favorite. Mm -hmm. um, one goes across a, a lot of the U.S. West, which is as mentioned, In and Out. I do yep. like In and Out. Great place. And another regional favorite is uh, in a lot of parts of the U.S. and spreading pretty rapidly. Um, but started in a town where I went to college in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's called Raising Canes. Um, and I really like Raisin Cane's a lot. It's just chicken fingers and, fr and fries and uh, coleslaw and Texas toast. Those are like the only four things Oh, they have. Texas toast sounds really good. Yeah, which everybody loves, but it's actually my least favorite thing that they have. All right, here we go. We're going to get a poll okay. for Wendy's versus Wendy's McDonald's. Wendy's versus McDonald's? Um, I, I have a, okay, yeah, let's see. I, I'm kind of curious what chat says about that. So, chat, the reason that we didn't talk about Taco Bell and that whole thing. Where the Taco Bell is clearly best in class. Nobody else even tries to compete with Taco Bell. They're just, they're killing it. The, the actual fast food, uh, Tex-Mex-ish food, nobody even tries to compete with Taco Bell. Name one competitor, you can't. Well, Del Taco used to be a thing? It's, they're getting their butts kicked. Yeah, I bet. Um, yeah, I, I think you're right on this, Bridger. Uh, honestly, like for that kind of, for what Taco Bell is, it has no competitors. 
Um, if you you can scale up now, you can scale up quite easily. <laughs> um, you can't scale down though, but you can scale up, and you really can't scale sideways. Um, um, oh, by the way, guys, I'm doing this thing where I'm literally adding thinner to the bottle of paint itself. Whoa! Because I'm never going to use the paint in any other way. Like I'm I'm fine with this. Mm -hmm. And I don't like adding it to my airbrush. I know people do will put the thinner in the paint directly in their airbrush pot. I really don't like doing that. I feel like it never works well. Like you don't get a good flow. Um, so I always add it directly to the paint bottle if I can. Uh, and that's what I'm doing here. So Wendy's is winning this poll. I think Wendy's is kind of like is I, mind boggling. I didn't want to say this, but I was like, I was like kind of blown away that you were willing to put this up as a poll. I was like, I'm I'm pretty sure Wendy's is gonna win this. It's, uh, <sighs> Wendy's is, I think a lot of people know Wendy's to actually be like fairly good. Their nuggets are better. I'll give them that. They oh, do wait, beat McDonald's oh, that's so on nuggets. weird. I think McDonald's nuggets are better. No, wow. McDonald's nuggets, they're the reason, when I was a kid, wow. good thing we never get challenge. fast food together, Bridget. There was a challenge to eat like 80 McDonald's chicken nuggets when I was a kid, and you could never do it. It's not possible. Like, you have to keep them down. You can't eat 80 McDonald's chicken nuggets. And it's not a space <laughs> problem. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. The reason Bridger, guys, everyone just, I just want to confirm. The reason Bridger doesn't like McDonald's chicken nuggets is because he tried to eat 80 one No, 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 no. The reason you can't eat 80 is because they're coated in a grease that just, it causes problems. It's a problematic grease. And if I eat a single McDonald's chicken nugget, you have, I, the, you have the problem. The grease is like, it's like, mm, you know? Okay, well, I will, I will confirm or admit that I, I have not had that problem. With with uh Mc, with really? McDonald's chicken nuggets, yeah, and uh, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. Meg um has a eternal, I think it's like at this point twelve or fifteen year boycott of McDonald's. Okay, is um, there she, like a reason? Is this, yep, there's a reason, which is screen? that she got tired of all like two or three McDonald's in Southern California where we lived, constantly messing up our order. Okay, and the straw that broke the cam yeah, no political principles <laughs> That's here. So funny. The straw that broke the camel's back was we went. <laughs> uh, we were going out to the desert with our dad uh, to, like, I, I remember we were doing hiking or something. We stopped for breakfast on the way, and she got, like, the McDonald's big breakfast, and they didn't give her. The McDonald's big breakfast is, like, pancakes, sausage. It's, like, the little platter. Right. They didn't give her <laughs> napkins, <laughs> knives, forks, <laughs> syrup. Gel, they didn't give her anything. They literally <laughs> just gave that. And we were, like, looking through our stuff, and... <laughs> And we were like, she's like, that's it. That's it. I, I'm never going to eat McDonald's again. again. No more hasn't. McDonald's. Um, but when she's gone, uh, one of, sometimes I'll get, uh, I'll get the, the nuggets from McDonald's. This is literally the only thing I ever get from them. Huh. That's so interesting. Yeah, I don't have problems with that grease. Uh, but now I'm a little concerned. No, it's, it's real bad. That's why there was a challenge. Because it's like actually humanly not possible to eat that many chicken nuggets. Yeah. You will. They'll come, they'll come back. You'll see them again. But and listen, here's the deal. Let's say those chicken nuggets were made with like love in, in like a kitchen uh -huh. and just like a, like a light olive oil. Sure. Um, well, you can't deep fry an olive oil really, but like, like just like a, like a light vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe a peanut and, oil. Like, I, make, I, I home make chicken nuggets all the time. Okay. Still eating 80 is, is bad. Like if I, if I, like I get like Rosie's chicken, it's like, it's like pasture raised, blah, 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 and I cut them up. I, I make the, I make I home make my own breadcrumbs and I, I fry them in like a light oil and then yeah. I eat them. But eating um, eighty is is I think almost always going to be a problem, right? Regardless of if they're McDonald's. Pro or like a space problem? Like you're full? I, I mean, yes, I guess. Just like human beings aren't designed to eat eighty <laughs> chicken nuggets in one sitting. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. Anyone? <laughs> Um, McDonald's, Wendy's, homemade, doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that was, that was a fun diversion. That was fun. Um, yeah, fast food is so interesting. I, for a really long time, I, 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 I haven't been eating fast food. Mm -hmm. um, but, but occasionally, Meg and I will get Wendy's. It's like the only oh, I didn't get to talk about Jersey Mike's. One of the local chains I really like. Oh, are, do we count Subway, fast better. food? Jersey Mike's. Do we count? Jersey, Jersey Mike's is fast food? Uh, I would describe it as fast casual. Oh, fast casual. Okay. Right? It's like, it's like, uh, it's on the same tier as like a Subway or Chipotle. Okay. So, oh, okay. See, I think that's a different tier. It is. Fast okay. casual. Yeah. Fast casual. I do love Jersey Mike's. I'm a, I, I'm, Bridger and I are both from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Well, he's from Ohio. That's like the, 
It's basically the East Coast. It's like coast. baby East Coast. It's the East Coast of the Midwest. It's East, it's the, it is the East Coast. Michigan and, and Ohio are like the East Coast of the Midwest, yeah. Um, and I, I, there's like, it's hard to get a really good cold cut in California. Yeah. Um, like it's, I don't know that it's hard, but it's, it's way easier on the East Coast. Like in the East Coast, <clears throat> like a little mom and pop grocery store will just make you one back in their deli section. Right, yeah. And that just doesn't exist out here. And, and so, they don't even they don't even have delis here. Uh, like, not not like, not really. Like not, a good <clears throat> Russian mob run deli, they don't do here. Yeah, there's one, um, but they do. They tend to do more of like the Russian mob run style sound, and like German style stuff, like liverwurst and stuff. Oh, which is okay every now and then. But I really want more like the Italian stuff, like Capicola and um, right. Th- and yeah, was, I had a great place in in undergrad. Where they only the business was only in cash, so it was pretty clear they were money laundering, and the sandwiches were delicious. They were way underpriced because again they were money laundering. Yeah. But you'd get a giant sandwich, and it would just be all you ate all day. And they yeah. had they had like two hundred menu items, because again, money. They laundering. needed the traffic to money launder. <laughs> because again, it, like if you're like suspecting a place is money laundering, and you go in and there's two hundred items in the menu, you're gonna make you know what? I don't have time for this today. <laughs> <laughs> like as a DE agent or whoever does that, you're like, oh my god, I cannot wrap my head around this right now. No, it was to attract traffic because they knew if their sandwiches were super cheap and there was a sandwich to appeal to everyone, then they should have a bunch of traffic, and then they can really launder that money. Yeah, um, but I do. I, I, I Bridger and I, I think have have a similar fast casual taste. I do love Jersey Mike's, but unfortunately, I have to say, I think I've probably said this before on stream. It's like. Um, <clears throat> Lunch meat, uh, Dittmer's. Yeah, Bryce is talking about Dittmer's. Do you remember Dittmer's? Uh, I don't. It's a place near Game Castle Mountain View, uh, but even they are like more German style. Like they didn't have the Italian subs, but they they they're really good. Um, <clears throat> okay, can I show folks where we're at here? Yeah, let's, let's take have a look. look. So we've got a little bit of stuff left to do, but honestly, we have gone quite far. So these are the little crates. They look damp because they were just weathered. Uh, you can see how easy this process has been, though. Uh, here are the barrels. Oh, I'm so annoyed the one barrel came off. Here are the barrels. I'm going to give them a little edge highlight love. Um, and here are the, these I think are maybe my favorite. Here are the big crates. Ooh. You can see the, the weathering. It's, the weathering is so cool. The weathering, it's so cool. It's so easy. Now, there's a couple things you can add to this, and I'll show you guys. Um, and what, where I'm going to show you is not on any of the scatter, but actually on the, uh, here on, on this guy. So, a couple things. First... On the one I did uh, for for the dem- for the demo, I, I, I put a decal on, um, and I will probably add a decal to this one too. But I'm not going to do that on stream because it it just takes a while. You guys have seen me do decals before. Um, so what what I'm going to do is uh, now I'm going to weather it, but what I, uh, a little further with Seraph and Sepia. But what I would say also is before you do decals, I would with, with this one over here, uh, you want to actually varnish it because. The, the decal's introducing a lot of moisture, and if you start doing that, you're gonna be activating the, the stuff, the chipping effect. So whatever you do, um, if you do add decals to something where you've been messing with this, go ahead and, and varnish it first, then add the decal, then re-varnish over the decal. Um, and you can actually see what I did here with this one. I'll just kind of talk about what I did. Um, I, I sort of chopped up uh, the decal a little bit, and then after I put the decal down, I literally took the flat end of a X-Acto knife and occasionally the sharp end of an X-Acto knife. And I kind of like scraped parts of the decal away where it was the copper. So I want like the red to kind of be clear on a lot of the green, but wherever there's copper, like I, I start to just kind of scrape the, the red away. Because again, like this is indicating that something has happened here. Um, so you, you don't want like pristine red decals over top of the copper and the green because then it'll look like the towel went back in and we're like hey this tide wall looks pretty crappy but let's go ahead and spray paint our logo over it anyway right the towel wouldn't do that so uh if you're gonna do decals scruff up the scruff up your decals a little bit as well um okay so here uh real quick what i like to do Honestly, I've been using a lot of Seraph and Sepia recently, mm-hmm. um, and my here's my big reason for using Seraph and Sepia. <clears throat> I keep going to our local game stores, and they're out of Agrax, and yep, so I problem. keep using Seraphin and Reichland Flesh Shade, 
And I'm kind of like, you know what? I'm, I've been making this work. Seraphin, a little yellow. Reiki, a little red. Uh, Agrax is like is like the neutral one. It's like a brown. Uh, yeah, it's very neutral. But I, I'm I'm kind of okay with this. So here's my next step. I'm just selectively putting some some sepia down here. Okay, uh, and that's that's it. Uh, and I'm gonna do it on the other things too. So on our large crates. We do have <clears throat> the results of the um, of the contest, the paint oh, okay. contest. If we How, want to do that. We oh also yeah, let's do that. Still have a deluge of super chats. So. Okay, let's yeah, let's uh, let's do some. Well, let's take a look at. Um, at wow. Yeah, let's talk about what this is. So, um, f folks at at home who are um, you you guys either uh, are, are part of our Discord and and you've seen this already, or you are not. In which case, maybe you haven't seen this. But what this is, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up here. Um, this is community driven, new year, new hobby, uh, and the submissions were due um, oh, very recently, like like a, a few days ago. Um, a lot of this was handled by friend uh, in Discord. A big thanks to friend. Uh, Soups I think had a big part in this too. Soups, if if I have that right, um, good on you. If I'm wrong, Soups, um, be the, be the bigger man and don't take credit for something. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, Soups. I, I I'm pretty sure friend. Uh, Listed you as somebody that was that was helping helpful with this. Um, wow, some really cool stuff came in. Um, so let's go through some of them. This first one. Uh, th so the first three here were the winners one, two, three in that order, in the small model category. And mm -hmm. I have to say, I think the small model category uh, entries, those people are the boldest. I have to say, like, not that it has to be a competition in that way, but man, like, really nailing a small model, I think is hard. So who who did this, Zach? So this is uh, the the user's name is just Andy. So well, this what's is up, Andy. Andy. Uh, and then it's just amazing. I love the, I mean, obviously like lots of models cool, but wow, the the fading on the on the base on the shadow on the squares, the thing like is flying seer, around on, yeah, super cool. Uh, you can see they went in an edge highlighted as well, which they is did. like cool. Like you could, you know, they could have not done that, right? Right. Yeah, and it still would have looked good. Attention to details. Right. So really nice, Andy. Um, this is Ty uh, Tyrat. Whew. Yeah, also quite cool. And awesome picture, by the way, Tyra. Wow, like, look at, I, I love, I actually do really appreciate when people give, um, for fan stuff, when people do shots like this of their models, with like, they upload one picture, of, frankly, the like cool, almost like glow effect of the borders right, he has right. is extra cool. I'm like into that. Like, I know a lot of people are like, no, just, uh, just put the picture, like, no, make the picture look cool, I love it. Um, this is crazy. I don't even know what to talk about this. Obviously, like, I mean, the, this model, just the shield is incredible. And it's one of those models where when you do a really good job, like, it, it, it gives you... I'm just blown away. It gives a lot back. At the yeah. talent in our community. Me too. If I'm, if I'm honest, me too. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, this is, this is incredible. Yeah. So, Tyrat on this one. Great job. Yeah, really nice. And then uh, we've been, we've been fe featuring uh, Sir Eskos. Uh, I, I, that's always how I pronounce it. I, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Stuff a lot on our stream over the past. He he posts wow. a lot, and I he put, he puts his name on things as he, as you can see there. That looks amazing. And that always makes me want to put people's stuff up. But like it's crazy good, right? Like, um, I, so I think he put like <clears throat> extra work into this one. But he like I said, he's been posting a lot of this army up, and it just like always looks good. This is like a cool kit bash with like a striking paint scheme. Yep, and. Super well painted, great details, and the basing complements the model. Like this is a whole composition. Yeah, top to bottom. Yeah, really awesome. The next category uh, mm -hmm. is large models. Ooh. So this first one is by Los Jaden, uh, and I love the colors. Um, like you have to be careful with the with this teal and uh, purple together, mm -hmm. um, because nobody loves synthway more than me. But this teal and purple together, if you're not careful, it doesn't really even like. Scream synth wave um, for uh, any American. It's like you guys this remember was, when like it looks in the like 90s? Zinchin to me. What's that? This just looks Zinchin to me. Zinchin, right? Yeah, but like it's a little more turquoise than often you would see. You might normally see like blue and purple. Mm -hmm. um, and these two colors together can be. I just think they can be gaudy. And Zinch gaudy oh. is like not a bad thing mm. necessarily, but um, this thing doesn't look gaudy. It looks. I don't know. It looks scary. It looks collected. intimidating. Yeah. 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 I'm, Very I'm cool. super, super into this. And then what do we have next? Yeah. Here? So this is by uh, Brugi. And 
I actually, uh, what, do you know what Titan this is, Bridger? There's like, uh, is this the Revenant Titan? Well, I know that is like the one everybody says, but I know there's also a Phantom. Um, I kind of always forget the different, <laughs> as a craft world player, I, I, I haven't like said about owning any of these yet. So I, I, I don't I mean, I can remember. Googleify it. Yeah. Doesn't ultimately matter. It looks amazing. Um, a dark uh, paint scheme. Do you think John would know? Maybe. He might. Yeah, John might know. Uh, it's like a dark paint scheme that like is vivid. And that's hard to do. And I, I think it's kind of hard to do on a large model almost. Yeah. Really yeah, incredible. Looks, looks crazy. The it, detail. It, it looks super good. This next one, also super crazy cool. Another knight uh, by really? Darius, I think was the user. Darius Minis. Yeah, this one's super cool. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, the, 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 the fades are amazing. Um, the color scheme is, in, is insanely subtle. Like, uh, oh, Melly says converted Wraith Seer. Okay, cool. Yeah, it didn't, it's hard to like, with that Eldar one, it's hard to tell the size. Yeah, the scale, if we go back one here, yeah. the scale is kind of hard to tell. Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool Wraith Seer. Yeah, I want that Wraith Seer. I'm sure actually. John wants that Wraith Seer. Me too, I want that Wraith Seer. Um, so the the knight, the color scheme on this knight is like in, insanely subtle, and again, I think like whenever people can like make a make a subtle color scheme, like really this like crazy good looking, I'm, I'm impressed. It's very I, ominous. I, I what's that? It's very ominous. It's very spooky. I don't. I, yeah, I don't work with like subtle color schemes typically, unless maybe in terrain. But even then, I don't. So I'm I'm very impressed by people who are like, hey, look at my silver, black, and gold. Like gray, right? Like, I don't know, pretty crazy. Love it. Okay, final category, also super cool, the diorama category. Oh. This is by Redcoat. Um, I don't know, Tyranids are just like the perfect diorama uh, participants. Is that the right word? They are, yeah. So we have Dante, of course, in his beautiful golden armor. And then, there's that. Um, Oh, the Flesh Terrors Chapter Master. What's his name? I don't know. Why would you ask Gabriel me? Seth. That's his name. Oh, okay. Is that also Gabriel Seth next to Dante? Um, I wouldn't be able to ID him, if I'm honest. I think I just did. I think that's Gabriel Seth and Dante. And they're being real cool bros. Fighting some Tyranids. Yeah, it looks so good. Uh, love this one. This was the top place diorama winner. Really cool. The next diorama, also super cool. Sorry, um, did you say who made this? Uh, yeah, this was uh, Red Coat. Oh, Red Coat, very yeah. cool. Um, the next one, also super cool. I'm like always, as you folks know, a big fan of anything autumn-y, any kind of autumn paint scheme. Um, whatever's going on in this one, really cool in the background there. I, I kind of, I guess I wish I had, I should go on uh, Discord. Admittedly, I haven't gone on recently um, and, and check these out. I, I would like to actually see uh, like if there's a picture where more of this is visible. Right. Um, but it looks incredible, and the, the minis are painted awesomely. Uh, yeah, really nice. Same kind of goes with the next one. I know there's a little more going on here than this picture captures. Um, yeah, so this is Flannel Crocodile, as you can see. And the, the final one we have here is by uh, Coreg. In this picture, I can't exactly see the diorama, but um, the models are amazing. Yeah, look at those uh, those gloom spike gets. There's yeah. so much detail in all those models. Yeah, I um, gloom spike gets is kind of a fun army, right? Um, and I I don't know. I'd love to see. Well, honestly, I'd love to see more gloom spike gets. Um, they are kind of famously not so good right now, but I think it's an army everybody loves. They they have so much character. There's so much character, and it's like for AOS people, it's like the only destruction army that's kind of different, right? Right. If you yeah. think about it, every destruction army is like really like big mean dudes that run at you and smash you in the face. Right. This army is like a hundred percent not that. Right. 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 They're very um, very different. Very different, and I, and I like that about them. And again, the paint job on this incredible, super like you said, like a lot of detail. I have it here up on my phone. Even uh, the color scheme, like all of the different goblins have their own unique color scheme. Well, sort of, sort of, right? But actually, when I was looking at this earlier, I was like, they, they've still kind of um, like stuck with a particular palette. Right. You can see a lot of like repeated themes, which is a good thing, I find. Yeah. The I guess the highlight colors, like the, the yes. all the way on the right, the yellow is very striking. 
In the center, we have this like cyan, and the red finger is very striking. Is that a finger? Uh, that's a mushroom. On my, the, again, this laptop screen is quite, it's not, not huge. But um, we have like a mushroom in the middle, very striking, the orange to, to the left of that, the brown staff, like everybody has a highlight color, it's like really different. Looks great. Um, this is awesome. A big thank you to everyone who submitted. And quite honestly, once again, a really big thank you to, um, to, to Friend and Soups. And um, I, I know those two were involved, anyone who was involved. Um, thank you for everyone who voted. Everyone who participated. Really cool. Um, crazy, crazy awesome to see, to see this stuff. We've been lucky here at Hobby Times because we, we do look through a lot of it because we have our fan stuff segment. Um, so we get to see a lot of this stuff. Um, but I, I'll admit that um, I, I haven't been keeping an eye on this particular thread. Um, and I, I was blown away. I'm kind of glad I did. It was a nice surprise. It is a nice Hopefully, surprise. Yeah. It's cool, like, how many people watch us who are just way better than us at everything yeah, we do. at everything we do, yeah. <laughs> Fast food, painting, playing, everything. They're probably more interesting people. Probably more interesting people, yeah. Uh, okay, so here, let me show you guys where I'm at now. Uh, now things get a little more uh, norm normalized here. I am just going through and hitting the recesses of the Tidewall uh, thing with, uh, oh, this is the wrong color. <coughs> Although it's close enough that no one's gonna know. Uh, with uh, Corellia green shade, <coughs> just a little bit in the recesses. Typically, I don't stress too much about recess watching and edge highlighting uh, minis, mm -hmm. but I actually want some of the panels to have the shading be a little prominent. So not just in the recesses, but also along the sides, as you can see. So um, to, I'm doing this, it, it just sh it shows uh, just a little bit of like, sh re uh, uh, it implies a little bit of te te uh, depth and kind of texture like around the panels, like maybe they're curving in a little bit. So it's something I, I honestly, I started on, 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 the one I've, on the one I did last week, this guy. I started by just recess washing some of the panels, but I was getting some of the, um, I was doing it kind of quick and some of it was getting off onto the sides here, which is fine. Normally I just wipe it off with my finger real quick. Mm -hmm. um, but then I was like, you know what? I kind of like the, the shade there sticking around a little bit on some of the panels. Uh, just kind of like break up what's going on with all of the green. <clears throat> yeah, it's cool. Yeah. We, we do still have, I would describe, a deluge. Okay, of, let's, of yeah, let's, let's do some super chats. So let's get, let's get back over here. Uh, thank you, Andrew Ward. Planning a new board. Help. Do you pick a mat and let that determine your color palette or start with a color palette theme and then pick a mat? Well, I will say um, there are ways to have your own mats made. Um, I haven't really played around with that yet. So oftentimes what I will do, I've done both, Andrew, to answer your question. Um, sometimes I see a really cool mat and I go with that. Um, <clears throat> but I, I've done both. And let's say you do the mat first. That, that's nice and easy. Uh, you, you find a mat you like and you, you kind of say, all right, well, there are so many mats out there now, by the way, that you can kind of say, all right, I want to do like a <coughs> sandy dune desert mm -hmm. as opposed to like a red clay Arizona desert or something like that. Okay. Right? Um, so you can, you can find a lot of uh, granularity right now with, with different mats. Um, so almost anything you can imagine is out there. Um, my favorite for some of the more, like if you want to do a more realistic looking thing, often are a lot of the European companies, GameMat.eu, as well as um, Urban Mats. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another European one that I forget. It starts with a K. They're in Germany. They're also very good. Kraken? Might be Kraken. Um, but I will say that some of the American companies, particularly Frontline, some of those are just wild. And I love that. So the purple mat we have, like mm -hmm. if you guys have seen our purple board, um, ha we use that one. Uh, and, and you can really kind of go off the, the deep end and like creativity and being like, cool, what kind of world am I going to make with this weird purple mat? Um, so I've, I've done both, Andrew, but the first thing I do when I make a mat, when I make a new board, is I, I think about what is the board going to be? What's the theme I want? And then right along with that, maybe tied reversed is like you're saying the color scheme. 
Then I investigate and see if I can find a math that I think will make this happen. Um, oftentimes, I like to, like, if you want to make, like, a Xenosport, mm -hmm. like Tau or Eldar or Necron Train or something like that, remember that you're, lots of us will, will build Imperial boards, um, not on, like, an Imperial-themed mat, but, like, on a Wilderness mat. So you can do that with Tau and Eldar and anybody as well. That's literally what this mat is. Uh, this board is going to be just on a Wilderness Autumn mat. Um, so think about your theme and then think about where you want it to be. For me, I, I always try to get kind of maximum usage out of my mats, especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, not my mats, but my boards. And to that end, one of the things I do is, we've talked a lot about this, where I will kind of design a Wilderness setting and then I'll see like what who lives there, who has lived there. Maybe it's Tau, maybe it's Imperium. Um, the autumn mat we have can actually host uh, is actually sort of set up to host this this Tau set, um, a set for uh, that we have like this Imperial set that's like lightly weathered that Brett and I did back in the summer, the industrial like disaster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that stuff can go on the autumn stuff or it can go on the green like green mat we have um and then also that auto mat's gonna be a supported aos board so i like to sort of um approach a, a mat in, in terms of like the world and then who lives there and then like who who else could could live there like uh could, could i later add an aos mat to this or could i add a um could i add like an imperial version to the tau version or whatever could you live there What's that? Could you live there? Could that's I, really yeah. the question. That's the question. Um, and I do think, like, all jokes aside with Bridger's comment, I always sort of try to make my boards look uh, wondrous or beautiful, like something kind of amazing, like you'd want to visit there. Um, like, oftentimes, Megan and I have driven across the West Coast a number of times or parts of the, uh, and, uh, parts of the American Southwest, and, like, a lot of it is very boring. <laughs> but we all see the pictures of, like, Antelope Valley National Park or, like, right. where it's really cool. And I'm like, that's where this battle is going to take place. Like, this battle is not taking place off of, like, three exits down Route 5 in <laughs> California, right? Like, this exit in, like, the interior of the state. This, this battle is going to take place, like, in Joshua Tree National Park. Right, right. right. So, something to think about. Um, uh, I love looking at uh, on, on websites for... Um, <clears throat> Just like wondrous places, like I, I have these like lists of just awesome places like that exist in the world like na naturally, mm -hmm. and you can just search like amazingly beautiful places, and there'll be like these websites that just show a bunch of stuff. It's cool. Yeah. Have you been to Garden of the Gods or Arches National Park? Um, not. Uh, we've been to Moab, which is near Arches. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But when we were there, there was kind of like some funky COVID stuff going on. Mm. And um, the lines were really long. And so we just like hiked around. The lines like, were long. Yeah. The arches. Yes. Really That's long. Weird. Like create like bad. Um, huh. Oftentimes, and this is a like good advice if you go to, um, especially if you're like a non-American visiting like the national parks mm -hmm. and like you go to an area and it's like, okay, here is where this national park is. You should like research state parks nearby. Lots right. of times the state parks are like just as cool. Yeah, it's good advice. Yeah. Good luck, Andrew. Yeah. What are we on to now? Okay, so now um, I just recessed wash. So this guy's done for us today. Uh, I will go back and add probably some decals before oh, this hits looks the board. Amazing, Zach. Um, but we've got this, we've got this, we've got a bunch of these. These were, you bought these, right, Bridger? And, I did, um, many years ago. And then like, you bought them and then Brian bought them from I you? I sold them to Brian. <coughs> and funny story, when I sold them to Brian, yeah. I thought he was testing me. Test? What do you mean? Because I sold them to him for like more money than it should have been, but he didn't care. Oh, okay. It was like $400 for six of these or something. Okay. Six, six boxes. I like right, it. Like more money than it should have been. And then he gave me like $1,200 and I was like, this can't be right. This is like, this is a weird test. Why is he testing me? What does this test mean? Because I didn't count the money. Like, I didn't want to be weird. I didn't count the money in front of him. I just took this wad of cash. And then we went our separate ways. And later that night, I was like, uh-oh. This is way too much money. Why did he do this? 
But um, yeah, it wasn't a test. Just turns out Brian didn't really know the value of cash. Brian didn't know the value of cash? Yeah, funny story, right? Or Brian didn't know uh, the value of the things? Or... I just don't think he cared. Yeah. I don't think he even wanted the terrain. Well, I was like, hey, Brian, you know all the stuff you have? Can I like do things with it? He's like, yeah, sure, go ahead, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, guys, I'm just giving them, these guys, a little bit of like attention here with uh, the um, Garlberg Crimson. And on the barrels, I'm, I'm not like bothering, like you see, I'm literally d telling you I'm not doing what I'm doing. Like, I'm not going to go through <laughs> all the recesses, but I'm putting a dark ring around the top. And the dark ring kind of does two things. Well, it shades, gives, gives it a little bit of character. And then it also implies like maybe a little bit of moisture down there. Oh my gosh, drive me nuts that this one guy came off. I'm never <laughs> gonna get over this. Um, so uh, it's, it's just like when you do terrain, um, it's always gonna be a lot of easy steps, one after the other. But every now and then, like make sure you're thinking, hey, th there's this one hard step I really hate when I do all my minis. And it takes, it's like slows me down. It's like recess washing or edge highlighting or something like that. Sometimes I like to kind of ask myself, like, would this model, this terrain, would it benefit from it? Because we always talk about terrain as this thing that you can just like cruise through. But I do like to, I do like to wonder what would happen if I, you know, just gave that little recess wash there. And I yeah, think what it's would worth happen? it. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually also going to give these guys a little edge highlight here in a second, uh, just a little bit. <clears throat> and specifically, I'm going to give edge highlights to the small crates because they are they are really uh, set up for it. Um, cool. Bridger, we have more Super Chats? We do. For the record, I did return the money that I didn't... Oh, you did? You, I you, returned you, the... <clears throat> I, I texted him. I was like, Brian, you gave me too much money. And he was like, I did? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to give it back to you next time I see you. Oh, that's nice. What, what, a, what, a, what a hero. <laughs> exactly. How yeah. much could a banana cost? What, $10? Yeah. Just like that. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, all righty. Well, thank you, Kaldorf. Hey, guys, I finally used my airbrush to prime. Oh, fun. What, what techniques should I try next to max my hobby efficiency? Bridger, any recommendations for pre-con commander deck? Ooh. You go first. I do have... Okay, it depends on what you want to do. Lately, past year or two, um, the whole fire philosophies hit Commander in their precon decks, and the precons are like strong now. Um, I think the blue black zombie deck that came out last fall is very focused and does fun things. Um, the vehicle, the blue white vehicle deck that just came out in Kamigawa, is also really cool. There's a red green samurai deck that just came out in Kamigawa, also fun and cool. Kind of just depends on what you want to do, but all of the pre-cons in the last two years are, are good. Like, they're, they're actually compelling and interesting to play. Um, if you guys Ikoria, don't know, I think this is a Magic the Gathering question. It is a Magic the Gathering question. Okay. Bridger, while you answer, though, uh, zoom in on me here, because I'm, I'm just going to hit a little bit of edge highlighting here. Do you remember, Zach, when you asked me who Commander Staples was? Yeah, so I remember <laughs> like us having a joke about Commander Staples, <laughs> yeah. but I don't exactly remember like where it came from. <laughs> What, what happened? I think it was the Gargant stream. I was, I know I was being silly. I know you guys think I like wasn't being silly. But what, what? It was so funny. What was it? Do you remember? I was answering some magic question about like commander staples, like staple cards in the format commander. Staple as in they hang around and they're they're in a lot of decks. They're they're common. Sure. But I just casually used the term commander staples, and you. Like, totally dead face, just asked me, who is Commander Staples? Who is Commander Staples? Yeah. I, uh, okay, I thought it had something to do with magic, because I know, like, Commander and stuff is a thing. Um, so as you guys can see real quick, by the way, I, I, in my wet palette here, I made a mess, actually. I, I just mixed a little bit of white with um, uh, uh, Word Bearer's Red, mm. which was the highlight color I, good I, I airbrushed with. And now I'm just giving these some of these barrels just like a little bit of an edge highlight along their top. Uh, and you can see I'm also yanking them off the pink foam. And some of them are picking up a little more paint than I'd like, but it's, it's going to be okay. Uh, because they are terrain and they're going to sit down like that and you're never going to see it. Commander Staples. Yeah, I do remember Commander that. Commander Staples. Now, um, 
Uh, Did you need the rest this of the question? This was Kaldorf, correct? This was Kaldorf, yeah. And Kaldorf was also asking about airbrushing. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you just did some priming, cool. Um, I would say the next kind of step is to then think about doing a little bit of base coating, which is frankly not that different from priming. But then after that, it, um, do your first Zenenthal, which would, which would mean um, get in there and give them a top down. Uh, <laughs> Can you use more words to describe that? Well, yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, Kaldorf, if, if he's been doing any airbrushing or looking anything up, he probably knows what I mean. But, you know, you're going to, you've just primed, right, Shh, head on. Yeah. Now you're going to probably base coat often, depending on what you're base coating. Like if your first next coat after black is like just a dark version of the color. Like for example, when I do my towel, I put a dark green on because mm -hmm. I actually don't want any true black. And I basically do that like head on too, right? Like I'm holding the model here. Here's the model. I'm like, shh, shh, shh. but then my next coat, a little bit lighter, I, you know, I do Xanthal. So I start to kind of come up at an angle so that I leave some of the shading in there. Mm. Um, and I, I would try that. Uh, um, pra practice on a model first if you want. Um, but honestly, Caldorf, like I've said over and over again, if you can pick up like a terrain kit and play around with that, that's a really great place to, to always practice like new techniques, airbrushing. Um, it's very forgiving and um, you're, you're gonna get, you're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna kind of, you're gonna get a feel for the airbrush that way um, if, if you do that. And so, yeah. Um, that's awesome to hear. I'm really excited when people get into airbrushing because um, I think it helps people just move along their hobby a little bit better um, because you're, you, you, you get some of the hard stuff down. Well, no, let's rephrase that. Uh, you get some of the easy stuff that can be easy to mess up, though, like just base coating a, like a whole army of like something like Space Marines or Tau or Eldar with, um, <clears throat> with just by brush. That's, that's rough. Man, it takes a while. It takes forever. And it's never going to look as good as an airbrush. It's not. Um, this is part of what killed my, um, my, what's the undead army I was building? What's the, the flesh eater courts. My FEC army. Yeah. The, what killed that project was I didn't still have, after I moved, I didn't have a working airbrush setup or a place to airbrush. Mm -hmm. And the number of models I had to base coat is what killed that project for me. Well, and I was having so much fun painting that dragon, the cool dragon. Well, um, mm -hmm. you know, we are, we're kind of like looking at some AOS stuff right now, and so at some point we can, you can, we can bring that in here, Bridger, and just knock it out real quick. We could revisit it maybe, yeah. 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 Exciting, uh, exciting stuff, Calder. Good luck. Well, uh, thank you, CJ. Down in Atlanta, trying Conquest and testing my own game with friends. So glad to unwind watching you guys. Please never stop. Oh, thank you. That's very nice to hear. And, um... Be curious to hear how people are enjoying Conquest. Uh, the models are cool. I, lo I love the size of the models. Yeah, they're bigger, and I like how big they are. Yeah. Um, I had built... You built the, the like dudes. A, a, 100 Kingdoms. A portion of a starter set, not a full starter set. And I think if I finish building the starter set and somehow we find time to paint it, we might play it on the channel. It's a game that interests me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm a little nervous about some aspects of the game. Oh, like what? I'm kind of curious. I mean, so it is a rank and flank, which is what I want. I love, I never, there were, there are a couple of things that I missed in our hobby. One of them is 7th edition 40k silliness with blast templates and scattering and all the, all the goofy stuff you look at and you're like, <laughs> why would they ever put that in a game? Yeah. But I, I want to experience that. Um, and I missed rank and flank, which, again before my time. Uh, and so Conquest is a rank and flank game. It has all of that like, here's my leader and I gave him this cool sword and he's got this cape and this amulet. Or here's my wizard and he knows these spells and like all that fun customization that you, it got simplified in modern games. Like AOS and 40K, they kind of simplified the, yeah. the system. Sure. Um, but I think some of that complexity causes game balance problems in revivalist rank and flight games. And I think Conquest might suffer from a similar thing where like, oh, this spell with this amulet, it just deletes units and there's nothing you can really do about it. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah. I don't really want to play a game where my mega unit just dies instantly to a spell. 
Right. But, I mean, that shouldn't necessarily be associated with rank and flank, right? Like, uh, any game can have, can have messed up... Oh, certainly. Can have I just think issues, right? these <clears throat> styles of game have so many... They're hard to play test. They have so many weird interactions and ed edge, edge case combinations. I see. Yeah, you, yeah, I, I get it. Um, but that's super cool, and um, you know our, our our friend of the show um, who's been on the show, and we'll be on again quite soon. Cat um, is a fan of it. Um, she's been painting up the Verdrun. Um So yeah, potentially cool, cool. we'll see it at some point. Uh, well, thank you, Teddy, Zach. First super chat. What music do you listen to when you play 40k? When is your highly anticipated album of 40k music volume one going to be released? Bridger, what is music? I don't yeah. know why that last question was was pointed at me, but um, well, we just wanted you to be involved. Thank you, Teddy, so much <laughs> for the support. Um, <laughs> when I play 40k, what music do you listen to? Wow. I don't think you do listen. It depends where and when I'm playing. But to be honest with you, um, typically, uh, real quick, guys, sorry, uh, interrupt here, Teddy, to answer, answer. But as you guys can see, actually, there's not a lot of spots I want to edge highlight these guys because there's, uh, I've done a lot with the rust on the edges. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just kind of finding a few spots where, there are, where there's not as much rust and just, just hitting it with a little bit. And by the way, this color is... You can see off to the side here. It's literally just the uh, just white mixed, mixed with with the color that the base I, coat. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, as far as what I would listen to, mm -hmm. I would say um, a couple things. Taylor so, Swift. What's that? Taylor Swift. No, that's what you think. All music is Taylor Swift. That's B Bridger's answer. To Taylor me. Swift and Michael Jackson. The only two bands you listen to, Zach. Uh, Taylor Swift and Michael Jackson. Look, they're both prolific. They both have some some awesome stuff, um, but. No, I don't actually. I don't think you've ever heard me listen to either of them, to be honest. All the time, Zach. So um, <laughs> it, it really depends. If I'm uh, at home, like maybe playing uh, like with somebody, mm -hmm. honestly, I usually just put music I like on that doesn't like necessarily accommodate the. It's not mood music. It's, it's not just mood. you it's like, just like listening to Taylor Swift and Michael Jackson. Yeah, so it's it not on. that. It's like uh, I have like this giant um, kind of. Uh, synthwave noise pop list I've been making since like I don't know almost maybe since like the 80s. six years now six seven years um, so I listen to that because um, that's just kind of what I listen to a lot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or or I don't know all kinds of stuff I'll, I'll put classical on I like I like a lot of like um, romantic era and classical era and baroque music and stuff so I'll put some of that on um, <clears throat> as far as my own music. Um, I, you know what, I've been being kept pretty busy here, if I'm honest. And it's, it's not super easy to do a lot of creative stuff here and then also go home and write music. Mm, that's uh, fair. I have written some music since I've been here, uh, mostly for Megan's, uh, Megan's show, Not Quite Dead. Mm -hmm. um, look, podcast, check it out if you're a horror fan. Um, so I have, I have done that, but... Um, I have not really done a ton of my own music. Um, now, actually, if you look at any of our VODs that have come out recently, the Shroud Runner or the uh, Dark Strider, that's my music. Um, the intro and outro of the show is my music as well. I actually need, want to redo the intro. And um, as far as what you're saying, yes, I, 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 there was a time years ago, four or five years ago, I was writing all of this like, really long music. I was trying to just make like this lengthy playlist that was like mm -hmm. hours long. Um, for the purposes of, ooh, you know what? Get these guys a little edge highlight too. Um, for the purposes of honestly playing like um, a whole game of 40K. Okay. Uh, and like having just all this music. Um, but um, I, oh, that's not, that's not white paint. It's a primer? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a varnish. <laughs> I was like, oh, this something happened to my paint. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I have to get back on that. One, I feel like some, at some point, um, things will be like feel more managed and like flowing here. Right. Maybe that will never happen, but um, then it'll be nice to to write some more stuff, and it would be cool to get that out. Um, why not? You know. I can tell you now, Zach. Never gonna happen. You're always gonna fondly remember when you made music. I'll put it that way. I still do write stuff I s sometimes, but just like to to write 
to like add to that that whole thing that I've already done. I guess I could just put out what I already have. I, it's not like I don't think it's. Are you releasing enough. an album, Zach? No, I'm not releasing an album, but I, I'm, I'm saying no, that. No, it sounds like I, what I guess you I just could. Said. Put out an album. Yeah. So, um, Bridger, did you answer? What is music? Uh, I mean, I feel like I could make a weird joke answer about that, but I would much rather talk about times where I have played people who put on thematic music for their army. Oh and my gosh. And it's so rare, but when it happens, it's really just a, it's a snapshot in time. It's a beautiful little... You like it? Uh, I like to look at it from the outside as like a... As like a case study of Warhammer players. Yeah, like like a chaos player puts on like a uh, guar or like, right, like right. metal and stuff, and you're like, cool, yeah, I definitely want to listen to this for the next three and a half hours. <laughs> well, it's just like I I appreciate the passion. I love how into the game they get. Mm -hmm. I love how in the wor in world they are. Like they 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 are an orc, you know. Like they're they are an orc, and I I get that. I'm not an orc, but I. I understand it, and I like it for about two minutes, and then I yep. want to stop. Yep, yep, yep. I'm, I'm kind of with you in general. Um, now, I will say, uh, Megan and I played some AOS a few months back here mm -hmm. in the studio, and we put, like, epic fantasy music on. Mm -hmm. And I think that's literally where I searched in Spotify, like, epic fantasy <laughs> okay. music. And it was just like, I don't know, it was kind of fun um, to have it on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lots of weird to skip. We were frequently skipping tracks. Right, that's kind of the. Um, but the but theme. I could take the time and like cultivate my own like playlist on Spotify that I like to play for like AOS of like epic fantasy music. Um, but I, but I just I just haven't. Um, you know, sometimes Adrian and I will play. We'll get a game in here like um, mm -hmm. during the day, like daytime hours before a stream or something. We never have music on when we play. We just no. start, it's like silent. We're just like talking and playing. We just chat a lot. Yeah, we just like goof off. Um, so I, I don't know, um, but but th thank you um, by the way for for bringing it up because I, it is something that um, I, I studied a lot in and, and used to do more of, and I, I really uh, should get back into it. Yeah, one day, one day, one day. Maybe when you retire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't imagine that actually ever happening. That's Re hard. Retiring? Yeah. No, it'll happen. You'll get there. <laughs> you'll get like, no, oh no, you'll do it. Don't worry. You'll, you'll get there. You'll get there. <clears throat> I, I don't, I'm saying I don't think I want to retire. You'll, you'll get there. You'll get to wanting to retire. That's probably <laughs> true. Okay, hey, I think... Um, you did, did you do it? I think we did it. Let, let's, uh, let, me, let me kind of show what we got here. Let's so, do some show and tell. Yeah, we don't, we don't have the glam cam stuff. Oh, actually, this, so this is the glam cam. Now... The only thing, like I said, I'll probably do to kind of definitively like bring home, Brett did a good job in the design, but to definitively bring home that these are Tau is I will probably put some Tau decals on some of them and make sure I kind of weather those Tau decals uh, to accordingly. So, um, Zach, you, this looks amazing. If you've seen, thank you, if you've seen our autumn board, I think, I think this stuff is going to look really nice on there. And then... Uh, here are, we got, I haven't popped these guys off yet. Here are some of the little crates. Look at some of them all. You can see actually when you take these off, sometimes the paint kind of like, oh, that one was perfect. Cool, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll just say like, hey, um, let me demo how sometimes things can go wrong and then th <laughs> nothing will go wrong. That's perfect. This first one I pulled off before I brought it up though, you can see it pulled up. Took quite a bit of paint. Pulled up some of the paint. Um, and you can, you can spend a little bit of time either, you can file it off, you can slice it off. Um, oftentimes you can just kind of do it with your with your fingers real quick, because um, it is kind of it's basically like PVA glue with like a layer of paint on it. Right. So it's sort of like you can almost just like kind of smash it around like that. Um, but there we go, a little towel. These look great, son. Little towel scatter, different colors, nice and aged. Uh, there we go. How are we doing, super chats? We have a, a a couple left here. Okay. Um, before we before we wrap up for the evening, but um, just want to take the time to thank everybody for coming, hanging out with us. This, yes, this of was course. fun, Zach. Uh, good. I'm glad you liked it. I enjoyed this. Yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks, Josh. Currently trying to magnetize broadsides and make it look good. First, how do you? How do? Second, should I just give up and glue down the railgun? Also, I have three. No, don't give up and glue down the railgun if you want both options. Both options are very good. Um, I've been using missile sides, and people are like, oh, minus one damage meta. Like, 
there's a few things out there that are minus one damage. Not the whole world is not minus one damage, right? Like, and by the way, um, you're asking a hobby question. I'm going to get to that. But by the way, when broadside shoot, if you have three of them, uh, and it is minus one damage, it's still a lot of damage, right? Like, it's still 20 yeah, more shots. They have a lot of Strength shot. 7, AP 2. Like, it's still a lot. So um, use both. And what people do, first of all, search this because there have been really great uh, uh, th th uh, sites that, and, and, uh, th that show this. Um, I know one place where you can find some of this information is on the website Advanced Tau Tactica, mm -hmm. um, or at least join the Advanced Tau Tactica Discord. Brett is involved in that, I know. Um, and what people do, the one that I've always thought was most impressive is they basically make the railgun but what they do, it's the guy holding the railgun, so it's not like the fisty guys with the missiles. Mm -hmm. They make the guy holding the railgun, and what they do is they, they, they slice off like a part of the front of the railgun carefully, magnetize that so that that can be the railgun, and then they take the plates on the missiles, which you'll, you'll see on the high yield missile pod, they magnetize that, and so then that can stick. So he's either holding like the normal rail rifle, and that's kind of the default. He, it is the rail rifle guy that you're making, but they slice the gun such that you can, he can also be holding like this little missile, like a rocket launcher, basically. It's pretty cool. And I don't think people usually put both on and they just say like he's the missile guy now. Um, and then I would also, um, personally with the stats now, uh, I would mag. actually you don't really have to magnetize the, um, the secondary gun because it, um, I think it kind of like, like, like slides on. But um, the smart missile systems are so, so, so good that you're going to be like, hey, I don't want to take the plasma. But, like, plasma is kind of cool. Also, it's also good now. Yeah. It's also good now. So, like, I don't know. Um, you'll save points. Um, I think probably you're always going to want the smart missiles. Um, but, like, again, if you're playing a teaching game and something like that or, like, against a softer opponent that you just want to have some fun, um, you're taking, like, two instead of three. Like, I would, I don't know, put the plasma on there. The plasma also, like, weirdly, like, seems to as far as going into the same target, synergizes better with the railgun, right? Um, In some ways, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's not really what broadsides, you know, you're usually going to shoot a different target. But um, So look for, s search this, but what you're searching for that I think works um, and looks good is he's holding a railgun, but the plate is the is interchangeable. Like the, the, the um, everything after kind of like the bulk of the main part of the gun. I'm sure there's a real term for the main part of a gun, but I don't know what that is. Uh, thank you. I hope that helps. <laughs> great answer, Zach. Yeah, thank you. All right, last <laughs> one for the evening. Thank you, Caldor Drogo's left arm. Zach, I need help. I'm still new to painting. I don't know if you've read The Twice Dead King, uh, Ruin. I'm trying to go for an army in the color of the Ethicon Empire. This is a Necron army. Oh, okay. Do you know... Do you should I look this empire up? I, yes, you should. Okay, ETH, how do I spell it? I T H A K A N. I T H, then what? A K A N. And it did, like, if I search this with Necrons? Yep. Chat, what do you think he's going to find? I'm looking. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay, so. Uh, I don't, I don't know that what I'm looking at. I feel like what I'm looking at is just pictures of normal Necrons. Oh, wait, let's see. <laughs> Bridger, can you? Great answer. Do you know what this looks like? Uh, I can find out. I can try. Do my best. This is good content right here. No, it's not. Um, let's look at, but let, we want to get it right. So because it might I, be the Ithacos dynasty with an S. Twice Dead King. Ithacon Dynasty on the tabletop. Okay. Can you, is it possible? No. Is it possible to bring it up for me to see? It's not. Because you're looking at it on your phone? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what do I say? <laughs> Twice that I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen. <laughs> you, you still haven't seen it? I haven't seen Chad, help us out here. Um, because And um, who, who's this chat? Who's this super chat from, Bridger? This is from Caldor Drago's left arm. If you're still here, um, let us know what to search. Twice that King... <laughs> Necrons, let's see, um, images. I mean, it's probably not the worst TV because everybody else is also probably looking. Okay, here's a book. Okay, yeah, they're okay. from the book. Here's the cover of the book. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay. So, uh, kind of golden? Like a rose gold. They look kind of rose gold. <clears throat> really? To me. Maybe I'm looking at a different picture than you. It's this book by, a Necron's audio, audio book by Nate Crowley. He's like standing in the front with the sword. I don't, I'm not seeing rose gold. Oh, that I see is rose gold. Yeah, there's two different pictures. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay. Oh, I see the thing you're looking at. You you're looking at Rain. Rain, And I yeah. was looking at Ruin, Ruin, which is the book he said. He said Ruin. He said Ruin. Okay, okay. So they're kind of rose okay, gold. Awesome. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Uh, to get this color scheme, you're going to paint them metallic like you would normally do. Um, honestly, I would probably do like my recipe for like a cool metallic, uh, sorry, not cool metallic, I shouldn't use that phrase, a good looking metallic is like lead belcher and then you can do, you can do a middle one like um, iron hand steel or something. Uh, there's, there's a couple other ones, but honestly, if you just do lead belcher and rune fang, it's, it's pretty good. Um, after that, if you wanted them to be darkened a little bit, you could, uh, you could non oil um, in the middle somewhere. Um, but you could, so you could do lead belcher, non oil, rune fang, non -oil, mm -hmm. and then not non oil, or you could do non oil after two. The later you do non oil, the darker it's going to look. Um, if you do it earlier in the process, like just after the lead belcher, and then do the non oil next. Uh, it, it won't be as dark. And if you skip the non-oil altogether, it obviously will be less dark and less contrasty, meaning like in, in, the, in the recesses. Um, for, for the actual rose gold look, um, there, there would be a couple ways I would do that. So one is you could, what I would try out, I'm going to say what I would try out. I'm not going to say what I think will definitely work, which would mean I would recommend you try this out. One would be uh, to, a a after, maybe skip the rune fang steel and replace like the highlight, if you're zenithal, if you're airbrushing, but even if you're not airbrushing, like a dry brush, g over top of, um, of, a, of a silver, like lead belcher, you could then do rune fang. I would actually put gold over top of it. And then um, like a light, like a cool go gold. I think the one that GW has that's cool gold is called... Uh, Relicator gold, I can't remember. Um, not like a yellow gold, but more like a like a like a cooler, more neutral gold. Um, and what I would then do is get a tint, and I you know I actually really like the the AK tints. Um, they they call them inks. Uh, Citadel they they kind of sit in a layer in an area between a shade, a Citadel shade, and a Citadel contrast paint. Um, you could also use a Citadel shade through an airbrush, um, but I would use either an AK ink, um, see, see which one you like better consistency wise, or um, a Citadel shade. Again, if you're airbrushing, you're, I see you're in chat, uh, Caldor Drago's left arm, so if you're airbrushing, let us know, but um, either way, I think you could apply it um, <coughs> uh, fairly easily, and I, I guess I would look for the right color that's gonna turn you're gonna want like a like a pink, right? You're gonna want pink over top of gold to make ro it makes rose gold, but also you want the gold itself to go over top of like silver, I think, um, to get the look of this guy. That would be what I would try out. Um, and frankly, like I said, I would try it out because I'm describing this process to you and I'm thinking it would work. And if I had to come in here tomorrow and do that, that's what I would start with trying. Um, but. I will say that lots of times you, you have to feel it out along the way. Um, but I would say silver, like dark silver, lead belcher, followed by um, rune fang to brighten it up a little bit. Then actually followed by gold, like a cool gold. Okay, no airbrush, that's okay. You can actually do a lot of this with dry brushing. Um, so I would, I, would dry brush I would dry brush lead belcher over the whole model. <coughs> Then I would probably wash it with non-oil, let it dry. Then I would dry brush Rune Fang Steel with a soft dry brush, kind of like brightening up the model a little bit. You'll see it, it'll, it'll just start popping out. Then after that, again with a soft dry brush, I would do like a cool gold. And then finally, what I would do with the, with the ink, what I would really do is I would, I would get it very thin and watered down at first and um, go over, like kind of start to paint the, 
carefully in one direction if you're not using an airbrush. Um, go, go in one direction and let it kind of land in recesses. Your recesses should still be dark, which means that the pink is going to go into the recesses and like disappear because it's going to sit on top of black and it's not going to be visible. But the big thing you'll want to probably try is that pink uh, that you're going to wash over top of it, no matter what brand you use. Um, Citadel, I don't know, they do now have like a pink shade. I forget, they have like a magenta shade now. Um, thin it. In fact, like start with it. Think about Dragonhoff Nightshade? That is, Dragonhoff Nightshade is blue. Is it? Yeah, I have it right here. Yeah, it's blue. Um, oh, there's a there's like a slanesh pink. There's a there there is a there is a magenta now, and I haven't used it yet. Actually, I've never had to use it. This sh it's a shade. Uh, don't use like Garthberg Crimson. It's too red. So you, you thin it and like make it like when you're thinning it, like the first few layers you paint, put over top of this gold. Um, like if it's barely doing anything, good, because you want to carefully work your way into it and find the consistency you want. Uh, that's what I'd recommend. Yeah, and. Um, good luck. Also check out Turbo Dork's line. Um, their paints, I think, really work well through an airbrush. I haven't loved them. Yeah, ink, uh, Caldor. So the inks are from AK. And they, like I said, they kind of sit in a consistency in between a Citadel shade and a Citadel contrast paint. Um, contrast paint's probably going to be too sticky. Um, too sticky for, uh, for what you're trying to accomplish. So you'll either want something in between Citadel, not in between, but on the spectrum, a Citadel shade to an AK ink. Um, yeah, and, and uh, uh, Not So Average Joe's also recommended Turbo Dork here in chat, I see. The big issue with Turbo Dork is um, you'll want to, yeah, you'll really want to, to work with that a bit um, and see if it works for you. Like, go grab one bottle of a pink you think might work for you um, because I, I find that their paints um, don't, always love being brushed on. They love an airbrush. They don't always love being brushed on. I would say that. Uh, awesome. Did we do it, Bridger? We did it. Cool. Um, okay, so uh, we have uh, a few things coming up for, for, for us on, here on Hobby Tines. Um, and I guess I, I, I would just say keep an eye out on them. Um, we are a little bit in limited capacity until our computer comes back when ski week is over. Um, <laughs> But uh, we, we do still have, um, we, we will be back next Wednesday. And um, after that, we will have, we have some stuff coming down the pipeline, both via videos and also uh, exciting streams. We'll be having Cat on soon. Um, yeah. So I think we did it. Bridger, anything, anything to add? No, it was, a, it was a fun time. Look forward to doing it again. Yeah. Um, if you are a Tabletop Times fan, I will be over there uh, tomorrow playing Tau against something Adrian, uh, something of Adrian's. Not sure yet. Uh, so uh, catch me there. So it'd be super fun. Otherwise, guys, as we like to say, uh, be kind to each other, be kind to yourself, and always be creating. Thanks, guys, and see ya.